putting that tune into somewhere in the middle with Sunni and Mo. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, dying on the beat. Hey, I got so many ups. Everywhere I go, I got. I got so many ups. So many ups. I know they plotting against me. I know it's hate. They wanna kill me, but please don't tempt me, cause I got so many glocks. Hey, ain't none of them empty. Jesus said they would hate me too. That's how I know it's envy. I got so many ups. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to sorry, the show. I'm tough my face. If I smack in y'all's ears, I'm so sorry, but I'm hungry. <laughs> I just shoved down my food real quick. What's up? Uh, we got to play the Big Booty Judy song here in a second. I like how Mar Landon is like, y'all late. First of all. <laughs> Waiting for this show. <laughs> First of all. Okay. You already know what it is. You got two colored people up here. <laughs> and we be talking. Hey, nothing's going to start on time. You already know how that goes. You already know how that goes. Thank you, Judy. Um, okay, let me play the Big Booty Judy um, intro so Suni can like sneak a few more bites in so we can Thank welcome you. Big Booty Judy and then we'll be right back. Big Booty Judy, Big Booty Judy. What? Big Booty Judy, Big Booty Judy. Big Booty, Big Booty Judy, Big Booty Judy. Stop, I want to see you move. Yeah. Big Booty Judy, Big Booty Judy. Big Booty Judy, Big Booty Judy. That's Big Booty Judy. Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. All right, guys, before we give you the beginning of the show, our nice little intro that you guys love so much, um, please, 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 I say it every time, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, drop a comment, let us know where you're watching. I'm noticing that we get a lot of people watching the show um, because we can see who's watching, we can see who's liking, and we can see who's subscribing. But um, not the same number of people are hitting the like and hitting the subscribe. So if you're in here, it takes nothing but a second to hit that little thumbs up that you see. It does more than you can even imagine for us. So we would really appreciate it if you do that. Thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. We hope everybody had a great weekend. We did. I'm sorry I'm out of breath, y'all. <laughs> A lot of rough day in the gym, man. I'm over here. I'm over here breathing heavy in the <laughs> mic. I did. We did. <laughs> no. Oh, you worked out. You're saying you had a rough day in the gym. That's what you sound like. Yeah, like because <sighs> because like I can't like expand right now. Like my stomach, so I'm taking like little half breaths. I was telling so Sudi. Dramatic. No, I was telling Sudi that like. I go to LA fitness and the LA fitness, like they've now put in this whole, um, like a CrossFit type section. So they have like sleds, they have these, you know, a wider range of like medicine balls and just things that you can do. I don't know what that type of exercise is called the CrossFit type exercise, but things that you can do that are a little bit more interactive because your girl hates cardio. Like you don't even know, like, I don't like to be on a treadmill walking, I don't like to be on a treadmill running. I don't, I mean, I like doing spin, but again, I get really bored. So I got excited when they opened this area up and I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like doing everything. And I was like, oh, dude, this is my jam. And then two days later, I was like, what the hell? I can't, I can't even get up from the toilet. Okay. I gotta like, I gotta like push myself up off the toilet seat, like a little, like a little push up. Because my abs don't work and my legs hurt. <laughs> so clearly I'm using new muscles. I think you're on mute, Suni, because we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Now we know what it's like for like um, paralyzed people to like have no muscle mass and all that dead weight. <laughs> I gotta look up. Exactly, right? You saw That's a video. Or, I don't know if this is real. There's a big video circulating the internet. Where this woman is talking about how she she was like fighting a handicapped person in a chair. Uh -huh. <laughs> she was like, What? I thought I was gonna win the fight, but this bitch got the upper body strength to fucking hulk. I'm telling you, I don't oh, know if the handicap person? Was real. Did you see that video? <laughs> no, but if you could find it, I'd love to see it. <laughs> Read it all hard. 
talking about her experience fighting with a handicapped person. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's real or not, but I was cracking up watching that video. Right. <laughs> Dude, speaking of speaking of funny videos, okay, so I'm going to, this is going to be our first, I'm going to tell you guys what we're going to be talking about, but this is going to be my first um, video of the night because this is going to be a SUNY Reacts video. Um, <clears throat> you remember last week, you know, over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the Risa Tisa drama mm -hmm. um, and all that stuff. And we were kind of joking that like, how long is it going to be till they make a movie about it? Yada, yada, yada. Well, the movie is already broken with a trailer. Okay. For real? And you're just like, how could it be that they've already come out with a trailer? Well, when you see the trailer, you're going to know how it happened. Okay. <laughs> and I just want to say, I just want to say, I called it. I called what this was going to be. <laughs> it ain't no blockbuster hit, but you already know I'm going to be watching it. Now, before I show you guys this trailer, I just want to go like on a really quick rant because I did this on my TikTok and I just want to go on a quick rant because if you guys are fans of the show, love is blind. We're all like waiting on the, the reunion episode to come out. I think for us is tomorrow midnight. If you are up that late and I was noticing on TikTok that there's all these girls that dated the male contestants on the show, love is blind and they're now coming out with these Risa Tisa style TikTok, you know, 20, 20 plus part videos exposing these men, right? Like, let me tell you what it was really like to date so-and-so. Let me tell you what he was really like. Let's talk about why he broke my heart, why he even went on the show. And I'm like, again, we called it that this was going to start a trend of I'm going to be I'm going to get rich off of TikTok being a victim of my poor choices. Okay. So if y'all want to see my rant on TikTok, it's about 10 minutes. You can guys go to my TikTok page. It's Let's Talk Darling. I literally go off on just where we're at as a society and how sad it's become that girls are now, this is the new, this is the new get rich quick scheme is to expose your man and not take any responsibility for the, for the role you played in it. <laughs> so without further ado oh, i'm going scary. to play the trailer for the risa tisa movie here we go now can you take a guess on who produced this tubi right or is that like a network i don't, I don't know anything about tubi but they made oh. another film that we all talked about huh? how many of you tyler guys perry? no 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 this is above tyler perry now even tyler got his standards how many of y'all remember the girl on the side of the highway i remember that so remember them, whoever made that made this exactly oh god i told you i told you those people were going to come out with the movie here we go here is the trailer they together so quick <laughs> Just watch just watch the trailer. Okay. Hold on. Why is it so low? Hold on, I'm gonna start it over. <laughs> just like your pictures, I am so relieved. Oh wow, you're stunning. The creator. We can go ahead and delete these date naps. It's a pregnancy test. I don't know what it is, but I don't know, just <laughs> It's always something wrong. Why is it always something going wrong? I'm down here at the office with my wife. I'm trying to get in the building. I don't have my key with me. I don't think he lied to me about anything else. This man, daily, I'm talking every morning, has been on the phone talking to you. Yes, bro, say hey. I don't know if you're going to stay or leave, but I can honestly tell you, He's not gonna change. My birthday. Party. I don't care about your birthday. Okay. Wait a minute, what? She got her in a fucking bonnet. I don't trust your judgment on the inside. Oh, look at the Gatorade bottles. I'm gonna work. We can talk to him. I've, I've been finding out so much about this man that is not true. Like, who the fuck did I marry? Excuse my hair, y'all, but <laughs> welcome to part one of. 
Just like your pitch. Oh, ghetto. Wow. That's actually really sad, bro. Like, what in the world? I, I, look, just from the trailer, I feel like I watched the whole movie and I don't need to watch it. Well, boring. we did. We, wa- we, we watched the whole 52 part series. What could the movie possibly tell us? Give us a visual? I don't know. It's just like, yeah, give us a visual on how it went down. Lord. But I think this... we have the visual on how it went down. Yeah. It's just sad. That was a, that was very hard to watch, Mo. I didn't know to you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Why, why was it hard to watch? I feel like my face was like screwed up the entire time I was watching it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a literal hurt, but like, <laughs> I really hurt to watch that shit, <laughs> dude. But you know what though? This is this is more so even more embarrassing. Okay, I'm actually gonna watch this. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. Why? Because That's we have so to. Boring. We watched the girl on the side of the highway. We knew how that happened. <laughs> I feel like I need to react to my reactions as I watch that because I really felt like my face was making a whole bunch of movement. I wish we I, I heard to watch. I wish there was a way that we could do like a live watch party of this because I know people love when we do like live reactions. Can't I you? Feel, I don't know. Can we? Is it on was that I mean, was was that on Tubi, the girl on the side of the highway? Yeah, but I don't think YouTube I don't think it's they they lock it down like um you think that uh, has got copyright on it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it will. So it, it probably won't matter. <laughs> I don't know. I, if we could find a way to do it. I'm down. I'll do it. I'll do a watch party. I wish we could do a watch party w- with a lot of shows, but you know. I know. We can't. Dude, because I feel like you and I have like funny commentary. <laughs> like we would have, it would be a funny commentary. What I couldn't keep that laughing. And yeah. She said, Who the fuck did I marry? And then you her in the car with the <laughs> with the little roller. Look at Judy Dunn did her research. She said, I think it's on Peacock. <laughs> Judy, what the hell is Peacock? I oh, Peacock. So Judy, I think Peacock is above this now. Come on now. Peacock has some has some quality. What is Peacock. So Peacock has like a lot of like the bra- the stuff from Bravo. It has like a lot of shows on there. I don't know like what they're. Oh, it's like Netflix. It's like another Netflix, yeah. Mm-hmm. How many Netflixes y'all go get? I yeah. I'm having a hard time keeping up with all these apps. People watching like Apple. We'll TV. see. But Why this is how Apple they TV do. and Netflix. But this is how. See, Marlena knows Peacock is a really good app. This Best is app. how they do you though. What he watches Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, he listen. If you got a black mama, bro, you grew up watching that show. I'm telling you. First of all, you watch I watch Love and Hip Hop or that right there, Real Housewives of Atlanta. I didn't have a black moment and I love Real House of Housewives of Atlanta. Or if you got a black mom, how, did your mother watch um, Little Midget? I think it's Little Midgets or the Little People of Atlanta <laughs> with the all black cast. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> no. What's her name? Her name is Juicy. I, I didn't watch the show, she's, but I know what you're talking the about. The radio host. You know what I'm talking about? I, 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 I know what you're talking show. about, dude. That show is funny much. as hell. Y'all are too much. That's funny though. But I love the Peacock app. But yeah, that's how they do you is they start they spread out the releases of things on all these apps. So then you gotta get stuff. You know what I mean? You gotta subscribe to the whole package. Paramount Plus. Ain't no way. <sighs> watch Love and Hip Hop on torrent sites, bro. I'm not paying no money to watch that shit. Mm. Who- Miss Juicy, see, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Juicy. Had her okay. own show. <laughs> okay. What tell tell us in the in the comment section what shows are you guys like obsessed with and watching whether it's like a a series or if it's like a reality show drop it in the comments because Sunni and I are always looking for good stuff to watch like what do we need to watch right now because we're already on Love Is Blind I'm on all the Real Housewives um you know we love watching like the documentary crime stuff like the weird um oh cult. yeah the the weird cult stuff yeah. what oh. whole dark whole dark what's that what is that okay black seal okay y'all gotta put the names and like just give us a quick synopsis about what it's about is it a documentary crime what's the what's the category it fits under 
Look at this. Marlandon says, I got Peacock, Paramount, <laughs> BET Plus, and Hulu. I don't pay for them apps, though. Somebody else does. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. So you're the reason why they put IP address tracking on it. Yeah. Marlandon. Well, I mean, I, you know what? I, I think it's fair to let you, you know, your people use it. Like, I think you were using my, my Hulu. Um, oh yeah, for the for the longest time I, I was like on your Hulu. But dude, I didn't like abuse that shit. Even if you did, how how am I gonna know? Well, I mean, like, like I I wouldn't use it like continuously and not be like, hey SUNY, can I give you some money towards your Hulu? You know what I mean? No, that's now, if, so you're, dumb. if you're like, hey Mo, check out this show and you give me your Hulu to access it because I don't have it. I do have it now, then that'd be a different story. Hey, listen, if you, if I'm, if I say, can I, let me get your Netflix login. Yeah, I'm watching it at home. I'm watching yeah. it on my phone. I'm watching it wherever I go. But see, I'm real greasy with it though. Like if I give you my shit, not you necessarily, but like if I get, if I share my shit with you to like watch one thing, best believe I'll be like, you don't watch that thing yet. Then I wish. <laughs> That's so petty, bro. Oh my, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Red Pill, she's got comedies. These are all comedies. Poldark, Black Sales, Tudors, and that's it. I think I heard of Tudors. The other ones I've never heard of. All of mine are historical. Well, what are you watching? You guys, keep putting your shows in the chat so we can find something to like watch with you all and come on and give our commentary since we can't watch it. We at least I have to watch it together behind the scenes. I know. I know. I went to go see the movie Cabrini this weekend. If you guys don't know that movie, it's being um, put out by Angel Studios, the one that makes The Chosen and they made Sound of Freedom. Anyways, Cabrini is about um, a mother saint from Italy, from Rome. And she, it's a true story, obviously. She gets sent to, well, she doesn't get sent. She begs to go to the United States as an immigrant to start orphanages to help children. And the whole movie's about that whole debacle. And basically she was like a, mo a, a feminist of her time fighting, you know, the, uh, the Vatican, uh, the government in New York, just all the, the, the things that were run by men, basically that she had to kind of work with these people to get what she needed to get. Anyways, funny story. So I'm watching the movie and there's like a bunch of like modern day feminists sitting behind me. And I'm like, okay, this is why they came to see the movie because, you know, it's like bad bitch energy of the 1900s. And they were like, you know, there'd be all about it, whatever. So throughout the movie, she's like, you know, I hear them in the back and they're like, okay, mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah. You tell him girl, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to turn around and I just wanted to be like, listen, okay, this is what a real feminist is like she's doing. She's still living in her feminine power. She's not trying to be a man or compete with men, but she's trying to compete in a world that at that time women had zero say zero power. Right. I'm like, these bitches back here, they're fine to get dicks chopped off. They're fine to put boys in skirts. Like, it's a whole different type of feminism. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, I recommend I the movie. It. Really, really good. I get it. Sorry, really? I'm just pulling one thing up. Something no, you're just good. Up on my, my radar. You're good. Yes, Judy, I agree. I love true stories and documentaries. That's kind of what I like to watch. Um, but every now and then I get a a good recommendation for like a series to watch. So we try to keep you guys up on that. Um, <clears throat> he changed his Did name you, again. Um, Yo mama gave me a BJ. Breaking oh, news. <laughs> Trump will be performing tonight at the Houston Livestock Show in rodeo concert with Bun B, Drake, Beyonce, Too Short, E40, Ying Yang twins. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That is very interesting. Um, you want to start with some like politics first? Yeah, let me go over what we're going to be talking about so people know uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight, and then we can start with the politics. So in no particular order, we're just going to kind of go with the flow like we always do. Um, if you haven't been keeping up with Candace Owens, if you don't watch her, her and Rabbi Shmuley, 
um, who is a very kind of semi-famous rabbi. Uh, he makes Israeli Jewish sex lube. And, you know, he's just like, he's got a heart on for Candace Owens. And I don't know why. Wait, and he also what? has a book called Anal is Kosher. Yes, that's right. He That he put out with his daughter. Yes. Yeah, he put out with his daughter. Anyways, so if you guys have not seen the Candace Owens podcast episode, we're going to show you a clip from it when we get to this topic. But it's called I'm Done Being Threatened, The Michael Jackson and Diddy Connection Exposed. Okay. If you're wondering what that has to do with Rabbi Shmuley, she names him in this video and it sent this guy on a roller coaster. So we'll tell you guys a little bit about how he's connected into this and what it is exactly that she said. And then we'll kind of go on to what he said. Then uh, we're going to talk about Chris Cuomo. It looks like Chris Cuomo, the brother of Andrew Cuomo, the governor or the former governor of New York. Chris Cuomo was the CNN commentator who was uh, let go because basically he came to his brother's defense in his sexual assault case and was accused of helping him to cover up some of that stuff. Anyways, he's looking like he's trying to rebrand himself and he's mm -hmm. making his rounds on Tucker Carlson and on the PBD podcast. He has been on with Candace Owens, obviously with Tucker Carlson as well. And I want to talk about it because I think it's cool that that type of stuff is happening because I... I feel like we kind of started a good trend of like being open to the other side, other opinions, and I see other people doing it. And it's a great thing, um, but we'll get into that a little bit. <clears throat> then we're going to talk about Monique's Monique Slaughter. Uh, no pun intended with the last name, but Monique Slaughter uh, went to Instagram Live and did a video basically crying <laughs> And excusing the fact that she ended her pregnancy, which was a seventh month pregnancy, um, and basically goes into a whole story about how her ex-husband abandoned her and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, it was quite a disgusting thing. And the comments were even more disgusting. Obviously, we're going to talk about the teen um, in St. Louis, Missouri, that got into a brawl in the middle of the street with some girls and she's not dead. She's in critical condition, but SUNY has done a couple of lives and posts about this. So we're going to talk about that one a little bit more. Then we're going to talk about the TikTok ban, um, that that's come back up in the news and what President Biden has said about it. And last but not least, uh, if you guys have not heard about the murder of a Birmingham mother, her name is Mahogany Johnson, or Jackson, sorry. She was like brutally murdered in a gang rape. She was kidnapped, gang raped by both men and women. And they dumped her body. And it's just like a whole crazy story. And it's wild that it's not all over the news. Um, but I think we'll tie that into the story with the St. Louis team as well. So sorry. do, Oh, and then we're going to talk about the Kentucky Senate bill that's passed. Huh. A ridiculous bill. A ridiculous bill. And then after reading it, I found out there were other States that kind of participate in a similar thing. Really? Yeah. Cause I thought Kentucky that's was the only one. <laughs> but long story huh. short, what's up? I said so did I. Yeah. Long story short, though, guys, if you get a girl pregnant in Kentucky, she can come after you while the child is still in the womb. But there's an interesting twist that SUNY took on it, which I was like, ah, is a gotcha. SUNY got SUNY got the peoples, okay, on this one. We'll play. We'll play Suni's uh, Suni's reaction to that story. Excuse me. Okay, I'm done, y'all. I needed to have my breakfast. I'm not myself when I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm Betty White. <laughs> I have a Snickers bar. 
I'm also this like throughout the show we'll talk about the election results because I know a lot of people are waiting to hear about um, Mississippi and Georgia. So we could just go ahead and do one now. Looks like Trump has taken Georgia. He's got an 82, I think it's an 82 six split between him and um, Nimrata or 82 15. I'm sorry, Nimrata who dropped off. She got 61,155 votes total and Trump is at 337,186. So it's safe to say that with 72% of the vote in, Trump has taken Georgia. Whoop, whoop. No. You going down, Fanny. <laughs> you couldn't wait to say that. I couldn't wait to say. I, I cannot listen. They need to hurry up with that case. They need her up. Her up. Red Pill asks, is the Georgia Georgia primary only presidential? So do they have any local? Mm, I didn't see any. With my like me looking into the primary election results, it just shows presidential. I don't okay. see anything else. And Joe Biden won. Now 95 two. <laughs> My next question would be, do you, can you, are you able to pull up what the numbers were the last time they did a primary Trump and Biden did a primary in Georgia just for comparison? So 2020? Yeah. Hold on. 2020 Georgia. Mm -mm. All right, Georgia 2020 primary results. Looks like Joe Biden got 84% of the vote, and that's increased. I think that increased because Bernie Sanders and they, they, they haven't really showcased anybody um, running against him. <clears throat> so Joe Biden got 84% of the vote, and Donald Trump got 100%. He earned 100% of the Republican vote. But that's also because he was really the only big candidate running versus and now yet. he's got Nikki Haley, but he still took 82% of the vote. But I mean, I, I asked that cause he lost, <laughs> he lost in Georgia in the end. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So he got 100% of the vote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Almost a million. Damn near. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Why does my mouse keep doing this? Okay, whatever. Do this by hand. Forget it. Um, did you guys see? Did you see this? Mo? I don't even know if you saw this. Did you see that um, 60 RNC employees were laid off after Trump takeover, quote unquote? Was that because they had a new RNC chair or because the RNC well, chair? People are saying that. People are accusing Trump, which I think this is great. People are accusing Trump, the GOP specifically is pissed off right now, of forcing Magadonians. This is what they call them. <laughs> Magadonians. Magadonians. Into leadership positions within the RNC. Oh Magadonians. God. I'm going to let you watch this video. This is on Newsmax. Okay. Of course. Check this out. This new leadership is going to bring in a whole set of fresh ideas. Getting rid of those sticky people, guess what? The building isn't going to miss one beat. We're bringing in new people. Chris Lasavita is coming in. You know, Mike Watley is there. Laura Trump is there. This place is finally going to run the way it's supposed to, which is to support the Republican nominee, in this case, Donald Trump, after tonight. Raise money. Make sure we've got integrity at the ballot box. If we do that, Donald Trump is sure to win in November. There you go. This new leadership is going to... I think this is great. I think this is, is what we're inspired to do. <laughs> Who is this? Is <laughs> yeah. His name is Corey Lewandowski. Of course it is. He's like, if we do all these things. Trump is sure to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't give a shit what comes out of their mouth at this point because the RNC is a joke. Okay. I need to see action. Really, like blah 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 with the names, like miss me with all. I don't care that Lara Trump is there and all this other stuff. Like, let me see what y'all do for real because up until this point, y'all haven't done anything. So let's put this like 
I, I, I won't call it a massive exodus, but 60 people is a lot to get laid off in one setting. Mm-hmm. You're saying, let's put this on ice to see if they actually do something with it. Yeah, I'm not going to get excited just yet. I just was like, man, this this looks like a hostile takeover. What the hell is Trump doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a large, large yeah. clean house. She did, but I'm now, sure I'm sure her father in law was like handed her a list. I I get what you're both saying though. I don't I don't necessarily disagree with it. Yeah, I'm actually sh- you know what I'm shocked. I brought this up because I thought you were going to go ape shit, but I'm actually shocked and pleasantly surprised that you're like, that I'm hey, being whatever. I'm- I'm practicing a little discernment. You're not a like, Macedonian. I guess I take that back. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I'll cancel the tattoo appointment <laughs> that I had. Oh my God. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah, I don't want to be a Macedonian. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> we, she says, we needed to clean house. I, I admit it. You know, or I, I agree, not admit it. I agree. Um, and it's funny that you say that because, um, Trump posted something on his truth social today. And like, again, you know, it's like Trump says like the littlest thing and people are just like, Oh my God, he's so fucking cool. We've got this in the bag. (sighs) You know, I, okay. So he said, this is, this is a statement he made Mm -hmm. day one is president. He plans to free the criminals jailed for January 6th on his first day and drill, drill, drill. Okay. I believe the drill, drill, drill thing. Cause he was doing that before, mm-hmm. but why is nobody in the comments saying, why didn't you do anything about the J sixers when you had the chance exactly. to begin with? Exactly. Like I hope, people, I hope people call him out on that. Um, so anyways, and he's calling them J6 hostages. And so people are getting like really just up in arms about him saying they're hostages. Um, to me, that's a buzzword. It's a buzzword. He doesn't have to say that. He could have just said people that I feel are wrongly imprisoned or whatever. Yeah. That part. That part. Uh, we didn't get to talk about, since we're on the topic of Trump, we didn't get to talk about um, Trump's taking um, credit for what Joe Biden said on the stage about the ouchie, Fauci mm-hmm. curing cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be old news to y'all. This is probably like four days ago, but we weren't live when, when this happened. And I definitely wanted to talk about this. You just pop. You just opened a whole like <laughs> a can of Trump. She coded my brain right now is what you mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. You put in the code and now my brain's like, <laughs> what I want to talk about this, this, did y'all see this? Oh, I remember this. Um, okay, I gotta pull it up over here. Biden said on the stage that the ouchie Fauci was going to be used to cure cancer, right? And everybody said, ha, oh my god, did you hear what did you hear what he said? Man, this guy's not he's not functioning upstairs. There's something wrong with him. The mall is open, but ain't nobody shopping. Right. <laughs> but your buddy Trump. Got on Twitter, not Twitter. What's this thing called? He got on True Social and decided, I'm going to have Twitter fingers and take credit for that shit too. (laughs) I'm like, who is in charge of your campaign? They need to take your phone away. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Yeah. COVID are now being used to beat cancer, turning setback into comeback. Vaccine to save us from COVID are now being used to beat cancer. Trump quoted himself. The, vac- the the pandemic no longer controls our lives. The vaccine that saved us from COVID are now being used to help beat cancer. I did a live on my own talking about this, and I also referenced a very, very landmark Supreme Court case that came through, which is Myriad versus, um, I think it's Molecular, where they were arguing to the Supreme Court to allow them to patent human DNA. Supreme Court says, absolutely not. You cannot patent what occurs in nature, but what you can do is create synthetic, which is fake mm-hmm. uh, DNA, cDNA, which RNA creates cDNA to mess with and try to solve on um, the whole breast cancer situation. 
to me, what Trump did was was completely like throw his quote out or the quote that people like to associate with him. They're not after me. They're after you. And I'm just in a way you just did like this and let the whole blitz against the American people just plow through. Yeah. Like the O line that you were providing before Trump, that just went bye bye. And you know what's crazy? It's nobody's making a big fuss about it. Yeah. Why? This is cognitive dissonance on blast. Yeah. Well, Sunni sent it to me. She's like, because I know she sent it to me, be like, look what your boy posted. And I, so I responded back with a screenshot of the true social comment I made. And I was like, I already hit him with it. Like this, this, we could have done without this comment, sir. Okay. <laughs> You, you need to admit you you fucked that up. Okay, that was all you and you fucked it up. Yeah. Nobody's talking about it. It just it just sends me, you know, like it, it just sends me all the stuff we talk about, all the things we hyper focus on. Uh, it's called molecular pathology versus myriad genetics. Mm-hmm. Go read that Supreme Court case. It's not long. It's actually very intriguing. At least to me, it is. I like reading and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. But why do you think nobody's calling him out on this? Like this, you know, you know how things are normally when I have a big one. Oh, Lord. I don't know who that is, but they're asking this. Whoa. Okay. Can we get rid of that comment? That was disgusting. Please drop your link. StreamYard. My dream is to show you my mic. I have a big one. Um, William. Well, we're not going to get rid of the comment, but William, no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> That just distracted the fuck out of my brain. What was I saying? Yeah, please don't. Please don't come on here and embarrass yourself like that. Okay. Anyways, go read the Supreme Court case and hold Trump accountable. But I was asking you, why don't you think this is like trending within the social media realm of people well, talking you know, about this? You know why, Suni. Nobody listen, why? it's very it's very few people that are going to call that out. Okay. They're not going to do it. And I, and I'm surprised that like even channels like Fox news that they're seemingly to me anti-Trump <laughs> or they did everything they could to be anti-Trump in the beginning. Um, but I, I think people, that's the problem with our side is we don't want to admit when, when somebody like Trump, says something that's completely idiotic um and yeah that's that's my only reasoning that that's like a glitch not even a glitch because i'm not in the matrix but that's like you know you, you know when you see like let's just say you're walking past somebody right and this is your first time seeing them mm-hmm. and the first thing you see on their face is like a massive zit right yeah yeah. And then from that moment on, every time they talk to you, you just zero in on that massive zit because they're not doing anything about it and it's just sitting there. I know. That's how I feel. Like... Can you just fucking pop it? Oh, like, I just... get rid of it. I know. I'm like, how do <laughs> you get up in the morning subjects and like look this? at that? How do you get up in the morning and look at that and not want to pop it? I don't know. Exactly. How do you wake up in the morning and see that your candidate is doing retarded things and you just say yeah. nothing? Yeah. It's like a massive zit in my face all the time, man. Damn. Well, I mean, think about it. The left does that with Biden. They don't say anything about his. <laughs> but we're not supposed to be like that. You can't call them out for that. And then you go repeat it. Uh, it's so funny. That's so yeah. funny. The left does it. <laughs> the left does it. And we always say we need to play like them. So we should just, just keep looking forward like blinders. We didn't see that he said this or did this, you know. Fine, you won this discussion. I, I, don't, I don't have anything else. That's true. Yeah, go you look know, at that Supreme Court case and hold Trump accountable, please. Yeah, but you know, like I was thinking the other day because I was talking uh, to P about the, about the what is it the um, the State of the Union, right? Mm-hmm. And then he was talking about the comment. Remember the comment that Trump made about. I know what black people have gone through because I've been persecuted, blah, blah, blah. He was just like, man, when he says stuff like that, <clears throat> he's like, I'm just trying to look for anybody else to vote for. He's like, why is there no other options? And I said, 
I said, P, that's just what it is. You know, that's just how it is. That's how they designed it. Um, but he was like, you know, I'm looking at, you know, maybe I'm trying to just see Kennedy summit. And here's the thing about it. Like, while I respect that pe there's going to be some people that are going to have a really hard time checking that box for Trump. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. And if your choice is, I'm just not going to vote. And that's your choice, right? But if you are going to cast a vote, let me just make an appeal to you. We have to think about this in a smart way. We have to look at, Think about it this way. Who don't you want to win? Okay. Biden. We can all agree on that. Fine. If we don't want Biden to win, you can't put your vote towards a Kennedy. You can't put your vote towards a Kanye. You have to put it towards Trump if you don't want Biden to win. That's all I'm saying. Because you might as well just sit it out. If you're going to go throw it away on a Kennedy or a Kanye or whatever, just go sit it out. Sit it out. That's all I'm saying. Because if you want to win, we have to vote. We have to put our votes towards the winnable candidate. I mean, hey, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I don't. Yeah. But I also don't think that matters much of anything if we don't have a Congress to push forth the president's efforts. Like he can right. have all the ideas that he wants. He can he Correct. can get on stage. And say, I'm going to free the hostages. And then you go, oh, because it invokes yeah. some emotion in you. But yeah, does he have Congress's support to to get this done? And when you don't primary and you yeah. don't participate in local elections and you have no clue your, who your representatives are, mm -hmm. this is what you're stuck with. Yeah. So, yeah, I would, I, I, I would love a winning strategy, too. Right. I yeah. think that is a winning strategy. Don't spread the vote. Everybody get on board vote for this one candidate yeah but that means nothing if you don't have congress but but also like suny says all the time the local elections do matter a great deal because like what she just said if trump goes if let's just say trump does win the presidency if we don't control the senate right back. we're going to spend our time fighting more impeachments and more witch hunts that's what that's what he's going to be hit with so we do need to think about that also in the same way that I just explained to you with the president, when you're looking at your local elections, maybe you're, you're not really like loving either candidate, right? But you don't want a Democrat in there because that's the person that's going to go and represent you up in DC. You have to go, okay, who is the more winnable candidate? Not who is the candidate that I like the most, but who's the one that's going to win that's still going to put a seat that we can control something in the Senate? That's what's really, really important. So I do want to say that because people often get a little lax on the local elections and, you know, they think, oh, you know, I'm just going to make sure that Trump's in office. If Trump's in office and he doesn't have any support in the Senate, it's like, doesn't matter, you know? Um, so I think we're going to talk about the next story. I think we're going to talk about is the Missouri, uh, teen, uh, who got her head smashed into the concrete. And I'm going to read the story here for those of you guys that don't know, so that SUNY can come in here and talk about it. Let me just go through these comments really quick. Yes. Vote wisely and educate yourself. Our Congress needs a reset. I agree. I just hate that it's two 80 year olds fighting for president. Yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, it took me a few years ago to realize that the Senate votes for the Supreme Court and we do not need more liberal judges in there. Three is more than enough. Agreed. Okay, so this is the story. I'm going to set it up so that when SUNY comes back, she'd be ready to talk about it. This is the story that we're going to be talking about, uh, the Missouri uh, teen. So this basically is talking, this article is talking about how the Missouri attorney general wants the teenage girl seen slamming another high schooler's head into the concrete to be charged as an adult and hit with homicide charges. If the critically injured teen dies right now, she is in critical condition in the hospital. This girl right here that's on the floor, the evil and complete disregard for human life has no place in Missouri or anywhere. I'm praying for the victim. State AG Andrew Bailey wrote in this disturb it wrote of this disturbing video. 
<clears throat> the criminal should be charged and tried as an adult if the victim dies. That offense should rise to homicide, he stated, if the girl, um, I'm sorry, he stated of the unidentified 15-year-old whose case is being held in juvenile court. Let's see if it tells us about the story here, what happened. And sorry, guys, this website, here's a better picture of what you see. So they show this girl that's on top as basically being the aggressor. However, we are hearing reports that this girl down here threw the first punch. Now, that does not justify what they did to her. But I do want to point out that she was actually the one that or that we that we are being told from witnesses that were there uh, that took the first punch. So it says the identified 15 year old girl is facing, this is the 15 year old girl right here. She's facing assault charges in the brutal beating outside Hazelwood high school that left another teenager only identified as Kaylee in critical condition. Her case is being handled by the juvenile court. The teenage suspect was filmed hitting Kaylee on a residential road and pushing her to the ground where she continued to punch her. The victim can be seen trying to push her attacker away as the girl continues to pummel her while repeatedly calling her a bitch. The attacker then straddles her victim and repeatedly smashes her head into the concrete road as onlook onlookers can be heard yelling, damn. Soon, Kaylee can be seen lying motion motionless on the ground while others continue to fight around her. When the camera eventually pans back around, Kaylee appears to twitch. By the time police arrive, officers found the girl suffering from a severe head injury. Kaylee was taken to the hospital where she was listed in critical condition. Um, and that's it. So, SUNY can tell us more about this uh, story when she comes back because she's been kind of like throwing herself into it um, more than I have. But from what I'm hearing, um, this obviously is being turned into a racial issue, okay? And there were comments in the initial drop of this video, um, people saying, See, this is why you can't send your kids to a predominantly black school. This is why you can't live in a black neighborhood. This is why black people are dangerous. I mean, just really, really awful things. Never mind, in my opinion, that this is a huge, huge example of poor character, okay, between two young women and whoever else was involved. I do not see this black girl or this white girl. These are two young women with extremely bad character. I don't care what it is that they were fighting about. Okay. My question is, what are you involved in that both of y'all came together in the street and there's people sitting around videotaping you and just yelling, damn, while this girl is getting pummeled basically. Okay. This is bad character. We're going to talk about another case about bad character, but soon he's back just in the nick of time. I read an article so everybody can get caught up on what this situation is about. I didn't show the video, um, but they saw like still images from it. But what do you have to say about this situation? Excuse me. Sorry. I just got my cardio in. <laughs> I had to run up and down some stairs twice. <sighs> okay. I think that what happened is tragic, and I hope that the young lady makes a full recovery. But I'm also not going to sit here and be foolish and say, um, to me, people are acting like they've never seen a fight. That's what people are acting like. To me, people are painting specifically the black girl as aggressive and the white girl as a victim. Um, it's all over social media. Of course, it's not spilling into the news yet. And I think the reason it hasn't spilled into the news yet is because they're minors. There's not much information because things are sealed in juvenile court. If now they do want to charge her as an adult, I think the uh, attorney general spoke on that. Given the nature of the crime and how horrific it was, they would like to charge her as an adult which I have no problem with. Mm -hmm. That's fine. 
when you try to smack a racial lens on it and try to denigrate one side, pretty much when you when you do what the left does and you replicate it and you kind of perfect it, is when I think it becomes an issue because mm -hmm. you can't be objective on this subject. You have to demonize the person, even though I wouldn't do that if the scenario was flipped. <clears throat> I wouldn't say a group of white girls decided to jump one black girl. I wouldn't show the racial demographics of that school and say, you know, black parents, you should take your kid out of that school. And that's what we're seeing on this side. We're seeing people say, we need to move away from them, right? We need to do this. Mm -hmm. They're violent. They're animals. Um, I saw at least 20 comments. I took screenshots of all these, but it's on my phone. Of them calling black people super predators. And I'm like, you criticize Hillary Clinton and Democrats for that. So it's just disheartening, honestly, yeah. to watch the anger that is coming from people because of how cancerous the mainstream media is. And people say that they're trying to combat that narrative that the mainstream media has put out. But all you've done is make a carbon copy of it and just flipped it and say, how do you like it? Here's a mirror. When neither side is going to recognize that about themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to come to terms with. Like people are galvanized on both sides. Emotions are invoked and, you know, BLM exists in the mind. Just like super predator exists in the mind on the opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, I mean, we talked about this uh, last week when, when, when you and I just spoke privately. It's disgusting behavior, period. No matter who does it. And like I said, I mean, I, I, I said this at the beginning that, you know, obviously the reports are, you know, of eyewitnesses that were there are saying that the, the white girl threw the first punch and, you know, that's why the girl was coming after her, you know, whatever. Um, I, I agree with you. Like when I was in high school, fights like that happened all the time. I think the bigger conversation of this is, is what is wrong with people nowadays that when something like that is happening, your first reaction is to pull out your phone to go viral with a situation like that. Nobody come into these girls, you know, like I don't, I didn't see the full, full video, <clears throat> but from what I did see, nobody was coming to the aid of these girls, like, you know, pulling one girl off the other. They were just videotaping it. People were driving by just like gawking at it. And it's a sad day <laughs> in our society when that's what we do. Yeah. And then, and then. Yeah. The conversation is not that the next conversation is now let's just talk about one group of people and how bad they are and how dangerous they are. You know, I, I don't know what the economic situation is in this neighborhood, but, you know, economics drive violence and crime and things like that. We already know that. Um, so I don't know. Well, I mean, they're already putting out statistics. Um libs of tiktok put out this post which <laughs> to me it's just like the, the, the only word that i can come up with is like this is super disheartening it it just it just shows that mainstream media legacy media has done its job in mm -hmm. fighting people successfully because all you're doing is acting like the cnn of the right this is something that the libs of um, tiktok posted I combed Hazelwood's school district DEA action plan, DEI, which is, I knew they were going to do that. Mm -hmm. Turns out they implemented a restorative justice um, strategy for disciplining students. Restorative justice in, in schools as defined by the NIH is racially biased, is a racially biased form of disciplinarian policy that seeks to punish certain groups differently than the other groups in the name of equity. Did the restorative policy cause this fight and all the other fights that have been going on at this school? That's like a lot of assumption. Mm -hmm. You're assuming that this school, because it is 90, I think it's 92% black, is somehow punishing the white students differently than they punish the black students. 
all based on literature that you see here. Now, you can make that educated assumption, but to me, when it becomes dark is when you post it online and you attach DEI and all these things that are buzzwords for the right already to create even more of an impl implicit bias mindset in people's minds on this side. So now what you're going to see, and this is just, this is just what I see happening. Thuggery and blackness will once again become one, but it'll happen on the right because I think they're going to do nothing but push racial violence against whites and showcase how it never meets mainstream media and create the exact same environment that they created on the left when it came to BLM. Hmm. This is what I see coming. It's already <laughs> happening on independent media. Stu Peters, Elijah Schaefer, um, not so, what is it? I forgot his podcast, Slightly Offensive or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're already starting to do things like this. You look on TikTok, it's all over TikTok. But nobody gave a damn about the school before this happened. No, they didn't. Yeah. And or the kids in it, for that matter. To say that the DEI is causing these fights, like, to even, to even like, question that. <laughs> is wild to me and, it, and mm -hmm. it shows me that you've never seen a school fight before you've never seen people just beef bro like white and black yeah. people beef in schools is why is it got to be racial their beefs happening every day okay and they involve okay. all different types of people every day multiple times a day multiple times a day in school there's there, but it, more so now more than ever because kids just i think are mentally in a different state, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what these girls were fighting about, but I think nowadays kids have so much like pent up frustration and anger and they have no idea how, how to deal with their emotions. They have no outlets. Okay. It's all on social media. You know, this is what it's yeah. all come down to and created. And I don't know. It's just sad. It's really sad. I there's another story I want to share really quick because there, this was not getting a whole lot of um, traction in the news, and I don't know why because this is this is a terrible terrible story. Well, now black people can say, "Look, the media won't cover us." Yes, and 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 I think some of them were saying that, um, but again, I want to go back to character, right? Let's not talk about whatever happened here because it, they're both equally tragic. But I want to go back to character. So I'm going to talk to you about this story. So this uh, happened in Birmingham. Okay. So Mahogany Jaquees Jackson. Um, in the 24 hours she was missing before being found dead by the police the following day. Here are the details of the horrifying incident. Police arrested a group of eight people made up of men and women alleged to have be beaten, tortured, and gang, gang raped Jackson on the evening of February 24th. Uh, police say Jackson knew all these people. Okay. During a hearing on Friday for the suspect, detective Mark green testified that the abduction began at the home of the suspect after Jackson arrived there videos recorded by one of the men. So they recorded this entire thing show Jackson being stomped and spit on green said another man was seen straddling her on the ground while throwing punches at her head. The detective detective said Jackson was heard begging for mercy saying they've won and pleading for them to let her go. Unfortunately, the assault was just part of the terror she went through. Green said in another video following the beating, one suspect is seen taking off her shirt. In another clip, he said Jackson was naked, being dragged by her hair towards a car. Someone yells off camera to throw her in the trunk, and then she was transferred to another suspect's home. At Serenity Apartments, she was forced to perform oral sex on the suspect at gunpoint. The detective testified that the man threatened to do something to her if she didn't do it right or if he didn't enjoy the sexual act. Afterwards, Jackson's pants were pulled down and the man ordered another suspect to sexually assault her. All eight of the suspects were present at some point during the incident. Eventually, Jackson was taken from the apartment by three of the men. Police believe shortly after sending messages to her family asking for help, Jackson was shot in the head. Her mother previously told local Alabama news that Jackson's sister received a pin for her location and a message saying she was being held hostage. Jackson told them to call the police, but not to call her phone. 
Authorities said Jackson's body was found the day after the assault under a mattress at an illegal dump site known as Dub Man's Row. Three suspects, 24-year-old Brandon Pope, 25-year-old Francis Harris, 18-year-old Jeremiah McDowell, were charged with two counts of capital murder, one for first-degree kidnapping and one for first-degree sodomy. The five others, 26-year-old Tasia Lewis, 23-year-old Sanaya McCall, 23-year-old Giovanni Clapp, 25-year-old Blair Green, and 23-year-old Ariana Lachey, faced felony murder, first-degree kidnapping, and first-degree sodomy. This is a terrible, and she, this this woman has has a child as well that she leaves behind. Um, again, <laughs> terrible story. So hard to listen to that. So hard to understand how somebody could do that. My next question is, how were you associated with people like this? Okay, where is the character that these are the types of people you run into? I can guarantee you, because I know who I am, that I will never be kidnapped, raped, and sodomized by people I know. Okay? If that happens to me, it's going to be somebody I don't know. But the chances of me putting myself in a situation for that is very slim to none. But we need to be talking about character. We need to stop talking just about the situations because nothing is getting solved by that. Nothing is getting solved by that. We know there's evil people. We know there's bad people. What are we doing to, to better this situation? Why did this girl's parents or mother get a text and the sister got a text and nobody did anything? Yeah. Where were they? Where were they? I don't know if I get a text, I'm hopping out on feet. How does she, how you get dragged naked through an entire par- apartment complex and nobody sees anything? Nobody calls the police? Come on, man. <laughs> Somebody knows something. Keeping hmm. it a secret. Yeah. It's a sad situation. It really is sad. Yeah. Excuse me. <sighs> Excuse me. This is hard to listen to. I swear I've never carried that much hate in my heart as I do these days. And that's what this is creating is a lot of hate in people's hearts for each other. For no reason, man. Mm -hmm. Dumb reasons. It's like social media posts, media narratives, and people's attempt to like counter media media narratives by going just as extreme as they do. Mm -hmm. It's I never thought I would say that social media has had a like dramatic impact on human life Mm -hmm. i used to think it was just on social media like this is just social media there's no way that society really acts this way but yeah really so people record fights we didn't have phones to record but we definitely like sit around and watch fights but they were always broken up before they got too far yeah Um, It's interesting that you say the thing about social media because I was listening to something and I can't remember what it was, but they were talking about they did a study like where they hooked up people's brain activity to like opening up different things like different social media stories. And then like some of the people had no phone. Some of the people kept getting their phone taken away and given back to them. And it was like measuring what it was doing to their brain. And it was like they basically said that there are super strong drugs out on the market that don't have the effect that social media has on the brain. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised the level of uh, cortisone. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad is what it is. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, they don't really have anything to look forward to in life. I know, right? They it's don't. sad. It's and it's like it's such a um like a double-edged sword, right? Because I think there's a lot of great things about social media. Yeah. But in the wrong hands, in the wrong circumstance, right? Like maybe with that kid who doesn't have a good home life, who doesn't have a lot of friends, 
who has self-esteem issues. Like there's a lot of like things that can make the perfect storm for this to just be a disastrous situation for somebody versus the ability to connect with people you never really would connect with, the ability to have a lot of conversations with people that you normally wouldn't get to talk to. The the quick access to news, however, not all the news is accurate. Not all the news is stuff that we necessarily need to know or should know. Um, there's pros and cons to it, and it's it's what it's like. They designed it that way. <laughs> they designed it that way. It's wild. It's wild when you like sit and think deeply on a lot of these subjects. You can send yourself into like the darkest place ever. Yeah, I believe that's where a lot of these. <laughs> I think these ideas start out as like good intentions. Yeah. But once you really start to think about the effects and, and the fact that politicians um, bought into technology that they can put on social media to get our, what, what is it? Cambridge? I yes. forgot what lawsuit that was. I think so. The fact that they can use it for those sinister reasons, man. They've done mm-hmm. a number on the on the human mind. A lot of these things are just, in my opinion, they're just warfare. Mm-hmm. They're like acts of war being committed against the citizens. Yeah. But we're just too stupid to realize it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a conversation for another day. <sighs> Judy says, uh, my kids weren't allowed to have a cell phone until they graduated from high school. I mean, I think I think that's great. But here's the other thing, though, is they've now even like worked technology into the school, right? So now they're like, oh, you gotta have a you gotta have an iPad. You gotta do this on your cell phone. It's like they've made it so that you can't live without a cell phone. Mm-hmm. There you used to be able to walk out and see pay phones. You can't find that anymore. Right. My son is planning a um a road trip and I was laughing because I was like, dang dude, back in my day we'd be printing out like 52 pages of uh map quest map quest <laughs> to yep. figure out how to get there and they're like on their phone and there's an app for planning and blah 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 it's wild like yeah, like dude. i said they they designed it that way we need it and it's killing us at the same time i just think people need it to have healthy habits on mm-hmm. on their phones you can have all these apps and it can be a convenience but like put them down and go back to real life. Yeah. Like go cook a barbecue, go have some friends over, do something, go out in nature, go hike. I'm looking forward to summer to be able to do that again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get out of your house. Go touch grass, breathe air. I got to get that. A sound soundboard. Breathe air, breathe air. Um, Well, this is a good transition though, into the TikTok ban. So, you know, TikTok has long been a conversation topic. Um, Is it good? Is it bad? You know, you know me, I I have a love hate relationship with TikTok. Um, I think that there's a lot of like cool stuff on TikTok. Like I love to go on TikTok and get recipes and like it's quick format, you know, type of stuff. Or like if I'm looking for a restaurant, I can look on TikTok for like a really cool review see the food. That's what I use TikTok for m- mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is something that like the youth is on, you know, like it's, it's a way to reach a new generation of people. This is what they're on. They're here for the short format. Well, on Friday, and this is interesting how this has taken a turn, but on Friday, President Joe Biden endorsed legislation that could lead to the popular video sharing app, TikTok being banned in the United States, a move that comes amid growing concerns in Washington about keeping America's data out of China's hands. Um, The legislation passed through the U.S. House Energy Commerce Committee unanimously on Thursday calls on China's BitDance to divest its ownership of TikTok or effectively face a U.S. ban. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson also supports the bill and has indicated it would soon come up for a full vote in the House. Biden has said, if they pass it, I will sign it. I I think it's kind of interesting. And I wonder like how that's resonating with his young voter base, the people that love Biden, that that he's going to take away that TikTok drug. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. What do you think? 
I think this is outright fear porn is what I think. I remember when I used to be on like on board with banning TikTok because China has our data and they have all these ways to peek into what we're interested in and all these different ways to um, be able to take advantage of us, right? Where we Mm -hmm. can, Mm -hmm. you have a phone, you're on Google, you're registered to Microsoft, Mm -hmm. you're on Xbox. Um, A lot of people have smart devices in their homes. Where are all these things manufactured? China. China. Yeah. So if they wanted to put some backdoor technology to be able to, you know, peep into Americans' homes, they don't need TikTok. Mm-hmm. They've already infiltrated the schools. So to me, this is just this is just outright government overreach. Why are you so concerned with the social media app when our three letter agencies are spying on us? Like to me, it's like the big switcheroo. Don't don't pay attention to the Patriot Act. Don't care about that at all. Look at TikTok because TikTok is watching you. Like, is it really? Yeah. And but but here's my thing though, and this is where like my mind starts going is I'm like, okay, but I thought y'all were cool with China. And and by y'all, I mean President Biden and his side. I thought y'all were cool with China. China's not that bad, right? Um, and then I think, okay, you want to ban it. What is coming on TikTok that you don't want us to see? Okay, because now President Trump has posted on his true social that he opposes the ban. Oh, now he opposes it. But before he was for it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So why is stuff switching? What happened? Mm. There's something deeper here. He says he completely opposes this legislation. And yeah, so I'm I'm thinking there's more to the story. This there's something weird going on. Because when the Democrats want to ban TikTok, like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe there's a false flag event coming up that, you know, yeah, they don't want on TikTok because everything on TikTok and Twitter <laughs> spreads like wildfire. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. But I still think it's fear porn. I do like the fact that we're even sitting here like, oh, what's going to come? How come they want to get rid of this? To mm-hmm. me, it's just, it's still fear porn. Mm-hmm. Because either way, you still have Google, you still have Microsoft, <laughs> you, you still have Alexa, you still have all these things. Twitter still exists. Twitter is like the epicenter of what is happening in the country. Mm-hmm. You hear about news on Twitter before you hear it on the TV. Mm-hmm. I know about things that have happened because I look on my Twitter feed and I'm like, dang. So you're gonna are we gonna are we gonna ban Twitter next? Like where does it stop? Yeah. They're selling all of our data anyway. Yeah, they are. You know what oh. Facebook got called out for? What did they get called out for? For uh, selling our data. I think it was like in an unethical way. I can't remember exactly what they got called out for, but it was something centered around them selling our data mm-hmm. for profit mm-hmm. to these like corporations and uh, marketing companies. Mm-hmm well you without, know, without your knowledge is what it was they're just selling it off give me a break without your knowledge y'all knew um the timu you know that app that everybody was like buying like super cheap stuff on mm-hmm. like designer stuff dude i remember when that first came out and it was like my son he was like mom don't don't buy anything off of there and i'm like yeah but like everything's so cheap like that's wild and he said it's so cheap because they're selling your information. So they're able to, they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars. Of course, they're going to give it, they're giving you basically the stuff for free or -hmm. at their cost is what it is. They're just covering their cost for it, but they're making so much money on selling your data. And then lo and behold, it came out that that's what they were doing. And I'm like, dang, thank God I listened to my son. Dad, to me, it's like wish. Yes. The fuck I'm gonna work. I will I will stick to Prime. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but I see the the advertisements for Timu all the time. Yeah. They also were called out for having kids for kids having mental illness cause of because of meta. Oh, but totally forgetting those kids have parents like hello. Man, I just heard a 12 year old just died because of a TikTok challenge. Another like, one? But to me, these things, these are just recycled things. They make it scarier because it's on TikTok. 
we were doing these when I was when I was a teenager, we were doing the cinnamon challenge on YouTube and Facebook. That killed. What's the cinnamon you put challenge? Put a bunch of cinnamon in your mouth and try oh. to swallow it all. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're doing that. The um spicy ghost peppers. Several several kids died from that. The Tide Pod challenge. The um pass out challenge. Y'all remember that when you hold your breath and you have somebody hold your chest and then you fall out and then instantly wait back up. <laughs> like <laughs> we were doing stuff like this too. It has I, nothing I, to do with TikTok, bro, and everything to do with where our parents. I never did any of that. <laughs> yeah, but you're older than me. I'm only 33. See, 2008. I, I was I listen, was 18, bro. I love when Sudi brings up some foolishness that that I'm older than her, and then when I'm trying to be like, yeah, you don't know nothing about this. She's like, what you mean? I'm 30 something years old. I All I'm do, saying I is, you <laughs> wouldn't have participated in this because I was literally 17. For if you uh, were participating in this, I would be like. We need to check you upstairs because why are you even doing these challenges? <laughs> Suni, you had bad character if you were holding your breath. <laughs> I didn't do it. Oh, but, you okay. know, we had hey, Vine. God. Like these, these, these were Vine challenges. Before there was a TikTok or Instagram, we had Vine. Oh, Lord. <sighs> <sighs> Just saying, Dang. y'all, like it's not the social media's fault. It's parents that don't pay attention to their kids because. I'm 33 and we were doing these things years ago. Over 20 something years ago, we were we were doing these very exact things. Where do you think the ice challenge came from? The uh, ALS challenge that came from my generation of just doing dumb challenges online. Yeah. Thank you. You remember oh, what's the show with Rob Deirdrick? I don't know. Him and uh, Big Rob. They sit online and watch these ridiculous videos of challenges that people do but in the beginning they say now don't go and try to do any of these things but that's that's listen to an idiot what is okay? the name of that show you guys know what i'm talking about put it in the comment section what were you saying ridiculousness said, thank you oh to an idiot though when you put a thing that says don't do this at home they're gonna be like let me take notes on exactly what to do you know you, you know, know like, we grew up watching who who grew up watching like me i grew up watching jackass does anybody remember that show on mtv yeah I watched it. Mm-hmm. We were doing that long before these kids were. They were sticking cars up their butts via condoms and going to get x I don't know about all that, okay, Sudi? You be hanging what out with the wild people. It was on TV, bro. Every Everybody knows that challenge on Jackass, the movie, where he went to the doctor after he I shoved know. a condom up his, a car and a condom up his ass in the doctor. Oh my lord. Kids, <laughs> if you're listening to the show, do not do this stuff, okay? If you're Look so bored, <laughs> if you're this bored that you need to put a toy car in a condom and put it up your butt, okay? Anything for views, bro. <laughs> please. Any exact but see that's exactly my point. Anything <laughs> for views. That is the mentality now is people are like, "Well, what can I do to be famous?" What guy can I talk about so that I get a Netflix special or an agency to come? Sign? That's the mentality that I'm talking about. We got to get away oh, from that. Yo, That's crazy. Um, um, Johnny, Johnny Knox, bro. That, I was. That's back in the day where black folks were interested in skating, bro. I was. That was a big thing. I used to watch skaters. Um, what's his name? Tony Hawk was huge. All I'm saying is it's just being recycled because my generation, we got a kick out of stuff like this. I would watch pranks on YouTube, challenges on YouTube. When YouTube first dropped and there you couldn't put music or anything up there, it was just people. Yeah, they did have kids, Cheryl. But see, the thing is, is that now it's not just watching like, a show like Jackass that's like produced and there's like 25 medics standing by and these pranks have all been practiced. You see what I'm saying? Like to us, the pranks look like they're just like roundabout, but they've been talked about and practiced and consulted with medical people. And there's, I mean, of course they're like, we don't, we don't suggest you do it, but they have medis- medical people standing by watching them. So what happens is, is that now everybody thinks they can do it. You know what I mean? And 
everybody's trying to compete, compete, right? So that kid who says, oh, you know, I'm just going to eat one more Tide Pod than the dude before me and have this really crazy reaction. And hopefully if I live, you know, live through that, I'll come out of it with a million followers. What? No, that's sad because see, no, because it's like, no, no. See, but that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's, that's one version of like the situation that we saw with the, with the two girls in the street and the, and the girl getting gang raped by a bunch of people. That's, that's how they express their stupidity versus these people on TikTok doing this stuff, like holding their breath and sticking shit up their ass. Like why you need, I think that was a stretch, but I get what you're saying. You need to do something else. Okay. You need to do something else. You are extremely bored if that's what you're going to fill your time doing. Yeah. If, if you want to eat a Tide Pod, then that, whose fault is that besides your parents and yours? I, I'm not, I can't blame social media for that. Where are your parents? My kids don't have a TikTok. My kids don't, they don't have a TikTok. They don't got an Instagram. They don't mm-hmm. have tablets. They don't have any of that. And and if they were to see somebody do that, they'd be like, bro, what the hell is wrong with you? Why would mm-hmm. you eat that? Well, no, mm-hmm. why? Because they have parents that teach them fiction from reality. And you mm-hmm. can't eat a Tide Pod and think that you're going to come out of it unscathed. You're probably going to screw yourself up. Yeah. Exactly. See, if I, if I were to walk into a room and my kid was doing something like that, I would have been like, oh, you trying to die? Don't worry. I'll kill you. Don't worry. We we put the phone down because I ain't trying to implicate myself in no crime. I'll kill you if that's what you want. Seriously, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it just enrages me. Challenge, that was, What's that? Salmon challenge was huge. People were, kids were dying left and right from suffocating. Due to that is crazy. Damage. Hmm. Maybe we were Gen Z, just not on steroids. I t- I tend to think that you know millennials are pretty smart, except for after after ninety five, it gets a little shaky. You know, but it's like the same thing. Like being a hoe isn't anything new, right? You just see more of them now because they they literally wear it like a badge of honor. Being a baby mama isn't new. You just see it now because it's on the internet, so you have access to everybody's business. Back in my day, there were hoes all over the place. Back in my day, there were people that did stupid stuff and got in fights all over the place. It was an everyday occurrence. You just didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Like, unless you unless you saw with your own two eyes. But I didn't know what was going on at a school in Michigan. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, in my day, if you said, who are your friends? I would be like, you know, Tasha, Karen uh you know p those are my friends because i actually knew them nowadays it's like yeah suny's my friend and you, they didn't ever meet suny they don't know suny they know suny from online but they don't know suny like i i that's what i think the dangerous ground that we've gotten on with social media is there's no like distinction on what reality is anymore yeah. you know i like listen i will agree discord story time they call each other friends all day, every day. And right. guess what? Every other day is a beef or drama between them. And then they go pick up and carry the bone and get five other people in- involved in a beef. And then they decide, okay, now we're going to dox the person that I call my friend. Mm-hmm. Bro, trust me, I get it. Yeah. And, and, and these aren't kids. These, these, these are people between my age and yours and older than you. That and, and, stuff like this. and I relinquish myself from people like that because I don't even want to claim those people. <laughs> if you're listening from from Discord and you're my age, okay, the forty ish range for you know mid forties, you should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm speaking to you, and if you're feeling a certain type of way about this, Ooh. it's because this resounds yeah, with you. Yeah, put me on the big screen. Get a life. If you are spending your days on Discord, like what was that girl that we used to hate or that we used to like make fun of? Um, M. Benz. Okay. Like she thinks she runs shit in Discord. And like, I haven't even seen anything from her. Like, I don't even know. But if you're like that type of girl and you think that like you're running some type of shit on social media, you're nobody. Okay. You're nobody. 
unless if, if, if I call my friend, my friend that I've known for years and I'm like, yo, do you know this person? Do you, have you heard of M Benz? Cause apparently she was running shit over on disc. Who exactly? You're nobody. And that's why you spend your days in these loser discord rooms, because that's the only place that you feel like you're somebody. Okay. I feel sorry for you. Go out and make real friends. And if you feel like you can't do that because you don't like the way you look or you're not social and that's the only place you can feel normal, work on yourself. Like go to the gym, go to therapy, get some help. <laughs> <laughs> Delete discord. <laughs> bye bye. I'm just, I'll, I'll, I, you, you need a direct. <laughs> I did. But this is just something that I, you observe it. It's at every level. It's teenagers. It's grown ass people. Mm -hmm. and, and it's that way because we had the same. I think it's a little different for generations after you. So starting with you and after you mm -hmm. because y'all didn't have technology the way I did. Like I got technology when I was 12, 13 years old. Mm hmm. Social media was a thing for me in middle school, but the majority, the mo most of my life up until what, eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, I was outside running around playing. Mm -hmm. So even though we witnessed these things, I think back then there was a fringe minority of teens doing stupid shit like that. Because mm -hmm. I don't know nobody that I ever came in contact with that did the hold your breath challenge that just we didn't do that. Yeah, but we were sure watching it on Vine versus these kids who have had nothing but technology. They're like, "Oh, let's go do this video," and then I'm, they're going to get millions of views off of that. It's, it's instant gratification. Mm. So it's it's just morphed and changed with every generation. Yeah, you are just closer to the boomers. Thank I'm God. like a healthy mix of in between. Oh, you know, I'm happy to be closer to the boomers. Honestly, they call me Sunni the middle child. Just yeah, I'm smack dad in the middle of two generations. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I I really I'm glad I'm I'm where I'm at. I'm glad I'm where I'm at. Really? Yeah, I am. I, I like I like being. I, I've got dual citizenship, right? I can hang out with y'all, but then I can go hang out. Yeah, with any young people because we kind of relate on the level. Yeah. I still think you're stupid. Extremely dumb. Yeah. But See, I can't. I can't. Like, if I think you're stupid, I'm not going to waste my time with you. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. Like, I'm almost halfway through my life, and I need to spend it with things that, like, matter. Like, I don't have time to <laughs> fuck around with, like, idiots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just don't have that type of time. Life is too uh, precious. Sure. Um, okay. So before we move out of, like, the damper zone with the, with the crazy stories, I, I came across this story. Um, Suni, are you leaving Discord? No, she. No, that like, place is a gold mine for content. Bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so I have a crazy story, you guys. This is a wild story. I couldn't even believe when I read it. I had to look into it because I was like, "This cannot be real." But of course, it's happening in the state of Utah, and you know who occupies the state of Utah? Those. Dang, I'm sorry if you're Mormon, but y'all be messing up. You you guys be doing some weird stuff sometimes, okay? Uh -oh. So, hold on one second. Dave, do you think maybe like the walkie-talkie right now <laughs> could just... <laughs> I know, but... <laughs> y'all hey, hear that? To Red Pill. Red Pill be on TikTok. She be, not TikTok. She be on Discord pissing people off. See, and I think red making pill people have emotional meltdowns. Red, red pill is closer to my age. Red pill. <laughs> okay, you're a woman of a particular funny. age. What are you doing over there? I know you got a lot of kids too. I know you don't got time for all that. <laughs> you whore. <laughs> yeah. All right. So a Utah couple was arrested this week, like as in this week. After their teenage daughter called the police on Thursday to report that her father has been raping her for the past year and a half. Provo officers questioned the couple, the teen's stepfather and mother, and they admitted they'd been having sex with her for more than a year. 
The couple, who is both in their mid to late 30s, were jailed for investigation of forcible sexual abuse, forcible sodomy, and object rape. The stepfather is also being investigated for rape. The stepfather explained to the police that a year ago, he and the victim's mother learned that the victim was wanting to meet and have sex with strangers online. An arrest affidavit said, he said, together, him and his wife decided that teaching the victim about sex and engaging in sexual acts with her <laughs> would be safer for her than having sex with strangers. And that's all she wrote. Okay. I mean, this is what you get when you when you allow the pseudoscience of like sexual education, which is teach kids how to masturbate and teach them that it's normal. This is what happens. You, yeah. You wake up the sleeping, uh, what do you call them? I'm, I'm just going to call them what they are. You tell the demons that they're allowed to come out and play mm -hmm. and prey on the innocent, mm -hmm. which is what they're doing. They're using the same arguments that, that, the, that the left and so many people on the left are using, which is there's nothing wrong with your two-year-old learning how to flick their bean. Let them explore. Mm -hmm. And who's teaching them this? Mm -hmm. How do they know how to explore? Yeah. It's wild. I'll take throw them under the jail, bro. Throw these motherfuckers under the jail. Like, I'm just thinking when the police were interviewing the stepfather and he just like calmly explains to them, well, yeah, I mean, like she was online trying to meet with people randomly and we just decided this was the best. If she wanted to learn about sex, then we would have sex with her. That's I bet you like, mother's liberal. <laughs> right? That's so disgusting, bro. People are gross. Like gross. Get a I, fucking grip, man. I couldn't believe disgusting. it. I couldn't believe it you want to talk about monice slaughter her babies yeah all right let's do it i got a great video. Slaughter. slaughter okay i have a great video here um from what's his name hold on oh here it is Okay, so I have a great video here from uh, Blanchard. You know Blanchard, yeah? Yep. So he made a he great video. Blanchard. Yeah, so I'm going to just play this video because this shows Monique's crying. Uh, now, if you're wondering what's on her head, it's her wig. She didn't cut the lace off. But here she is. This is Monique Slaughter. So if you don't know who Monique Slaughter is, she's from Love and Hip Hop. Um, <laughs> and that's about all I can say. Uh, she's, a she's, a <laughs> she's a singer, right? She's a singer too. She's not a singer. Oh, okay. I know. She, I, don't know now. I think she likes to make her. I've only heard her sing, and she's a. Like you, you ever you ever heard of like a a soft singer, a whisper singer, not a powerhouse? Mm -hmm. Where they sing like this and they sound good, but if they go any higher, the voice starts to crack. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the only thing I see her do is, is vocal lessons. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, she went, uh, she did a video online. We're not going to obviously play the whole video because it was like a whole long thing, but she was basically promoting leg term abortions in a sense. Okay. Um, she states that she got her tubes tied and that she would never experience being pregnant naturally. Um, Blanchard, who is the one that posted this video says you have to pay attention uh, to the language, Im imagine getting an abortion, tying your tubes, then getting IVF. What's missing? God. Satan wants to control birthing because his greatest enemy is the woman's seed. All right. So let's play this video. For me, which was I chose to terminate at 29 weeks, almost full term. So if anybody wants to know, let's just put it to rest. Let's just put it to bed. Let's just move on. Where are the tears? My mother, y'all could believe whoever you want, but the people that were there were there. They saw my stomach. They saw my daughter kicking. They saw my stomach moving. I was in the dentist for prenatal gingivitis. My teeth were cracking. That is a crown. That's a crown. This is a crown. That's all. This what is wrong with women. Not. I don't even that understand. I don't even understand what her teeth have to do with anything. 
Well, I guess she's justifying it with prenatal gingivitis. She justified the abortion? Well, she, I'm waiting for her to say why she did this thing, and she just immediately brought up prenatal gingivitis. <laughs> okay. Becky T, you want to know what happened to my show? I wasn't willing to film losing my child. I didn't why did you lose it? Born. I didn't miscarry. I didn't have... I chose. I made a decision. Now, Miss Slaughter... No why? Point. No, go back. Fucking goddamn Blanchard... I can't go back. Why Hold did on. she do it? While I'm while I'm here, you try to find the video where she explains why she got an abortion. Yeah, I, we need to know she why. Used, you blame pregnancy propaganda. She is trying to get you all to be okay with late term abortions, which will eventually go into full term abortions, which will eventually just go into all out child sacrifice outside of the womb. That is the goal of all of this. And Satan has picked uh, the perfect candidates to carry out this agenda, the black woman. Because the black woman wants to be seen, she wants to be heard, she wants to be idolized, and she wants to be worshiped. Black women are the face of abortion. They lead the nation in abortion. So my question is, what are we going to do about it? For everybody that's Is this more? Okay. I can't find the video, but I have her statement. Okay. Bruh. This this is this is why I say no exceptions. Because when when you say the the health of the mother, mm -hmm. these disgusting batches. They give excuses like, I will never experience motherhood again the natural way, and that's fine. But I had to do it. I had to do it on a heart condition. All the RNs, all the nurses that watch us, what heart condition would make it impossible for you to carry an additional 10 weeks after already carrying for 29 weeks? Why would the doctor say it's you or the baby? I'll continue reading. And I chose the best route for me, which was I chose to terminate at 29 weeks, almost full term. If anybody wants to know, let's just put it out there. Let's put it to bed and let's just move on. What heart condition? All of a sudden she has a heart condition. Didn't she, doesn't she have other kids? She has other kids, doesn't she? She has one kid, yes. Mm -hmm. Monique Slaughter has spoken at length about a decision she made to terminate her pregnancy. Um, people are saying she lied about it. In a video online, she explained that she suffers from a heart condition and recalled her ex-husband abandoning her, abandoning her shortly after losing her unborn child. That's what what does losing about. mean? That means that you didn't. You, this is something that you lost, and it wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. you can't purposefully have a loss. Right. You killed it. You murdered a baby that probably would have been just fine outside the womb. With some intervent, inter intervention care, interventive care, I think I think that's the word. Mm -hmm. You have the doctor come in and and provide life saving measures to sustain life, right? So that baby was viable. You decided to terminate it because you were going through whatever hard times you were going through in life. We all mm -hmm. know this is why women choose abortion. Statistics and studies prove this. This evil broad got on social media. And just got up there looking for sympathy for murdering her baby due to some made up heart condition. And her continuing an additional 10 weeks would have killed her. So are wait, you kidding me? So the dude left her after this or this the dude left her in another pregnancy? I'm confused. Shortly after losing her unborn child, mm. her ex-husband abandoned her. So I'm assuming the man left her because because you killed, killed his my baby. baby. Yeah, I love how they say abandoned. Oh, let's keep <laughs> reading. Um, I was at the dentist for prenatal gingivitis. My teeth were cracking at the crown. <laughs> I was cracking teeth. You want to know what happened to my show? I wasn't willing to film losing my child that I didn't that, that I didn't have a stillborn. 
right? So you didn't lose a child. I didn't miscarry. I chose. I made a decision for my ex-husband, the man that described me as the woman of his dreams, introduced me to his children, spent time around my son, answered my phone when I was down after my surgery, was in a group chat with me, and my family denounced our marriage and marriages that I hold sacred. Is any is anybody following this line of logic of mm. the reasoning behind why she did this? Well, and it looks like from what Red Pill saying, she sees no pregnant pictures. And the way she seems like people saw me pregnant, people saw my belly move. Are, it seems to me like people are even questioning if she even was pregnant or if she's just lying <laughs> to get attention. What is this? <laughs> like, here's a video, but I can't. You can't go through it. I don't like on Everybody Instagram that called. you can't push through the video. I know. About my pregnancy. <laughs> if you were there for me, I love you. Bro, I'm going to call Cap and say she's making this whole thing up. Um, I think it's absolutely disgusting that she's willing to blame a fake heart issue and her husband for her decision. Mm -hmm. Get to the bottom of why she actually chose to do this. Because yeah. I don't believe shit she just said in that video. That, that she's cringe bottom line she's cringe anybody associated with her defending that shit is cringe ew and again like why do you take to social media if this really happened really like this is a trauma trauma traumatic thing right why do you feel the need to bring it to social media and talk about it because like the greasy side of me wants to be like, okay, now I need the guy to speak up because I need to hear his side of the story. That's the greasy side of me. But in all reality, it's not my business. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but it's not my business. It's none of our businesses. Why she had an abortion, that she was pregnant, that she wasn't pregnant, what the relationship was like, why the guy decided to really leave her. It really is none of our business. But yet again, we love this type of stuff. And when I say we, I include me in this, in this statement because i fall victim to to getting sucked into this stuff but in all reality like why do people bring this shit to the internet if it's not just to go viral to get attention you know yeah because who was thinking about Moni slaughter before she put that out nobody girl who is calling you a liar except for like what a couple comments in your comment section and you just felt the need. I just want to go live and talk about this because people think I'm lying. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. She is. I think I told you to watch the, that whole Tank thing with her and Tank. I didn't watch you it. You got to watch that. Please watch that. What is it? What is it with her and Tank? Tank pretty much went on Hollywood Unlocked back when Melissa Ford was on there with uh, Jason Lee. Uh-huh. And... Jason Lee that. said, hey, I heard you telling a story about Moniz Slaughter, and I want you to come on here and tell it to the station. And he pretty much aired her out as being like a crazy broad. <laughs> like she's batshit crazy. She looks crazy. I mean, from I'm, from what I remember her on Love and Hip Hop, because I stopped watching that a long time ago, she is crazy. And like Jessica said, like, what happened to her heart condition when she was fighting all those girls? Like, she didn't have a heart condition then? I'm lying. <sighs> Hey, Mad Cow. Welcome, welcome. Hi, little baby. What you want? She's so cute. Okay. She's signing. We taught her sign language. Oh, fancy. Mm -hmm. Say more. Watch this. You want more? Hold on. What's this? Is this more? I don't know sign language. Is this more? Tell me you want more. Do you want more? Say more. Oh, like this? Is that more? Yeah. She's like, more. Oh, I just want to eat those little cheeks up. Okay, don't eat it then. Dude, if that if I were watching a baby with cheeks like that, they would get their baby back like just with kisses all over. Like <laughs> I would be kissing cheeks. That's all I do. That's all I do. Okay, so yeah. don't mean those cheeks. Oh no. Don't be nasty. I was talking about the baby. <laughs> That's what happens when you deal with a generation that says cheeks for, you know, it's booty cheeks. When you I say said kiss and cheeks, not clapping cheeks. <laughs> Don't matter. Cheeks is cheeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, all right. So speaking of pregnancies, so 
the Kentucky Senate approved a retroactive child support for pregnancy. Okay. So a bill that would allow Kentuckians to collect child support payments for fetuses as long as there is an order to order in place within a year of the birth pass. So basically, as long as it's within a year, not a year and a day, but exactly a year, you can retroactively collect your child support. Okay. From being pregnant. And yes, I said from being pregnant. Okay. Now, Suni made a great video. I'm going to play it right now. Um, because I was like, oh, I need, I need the people at Hollywood a lot to answer to this. Okay. Because, man, we were talking earlier, those people on Hollywood Unlocked, they're hella sensitive. All the all the hood sites. <laughs> all the hood sites on Instagram. Okay, here you go. And there you have it, folks. All you had to do to get women to acknowledge that fetuses are children was to attach child support. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. And no, you didn't read that wrong. A Republican-led Kentucky Senate voted to overwhelmingly on Tuesday grant the right to collect child support for fetuses. We are truly living in the upside down. And I want to get off the roller coaster. <laughs> Meow. Meow. <laughs> I love that. Meow. That was my favorite part. Yeah, it's it's wild. And so anyways, <laughs> this is what's funny. Okay, so the guy the guy who sponsored the bill, uh Senator Whit Whitney Wester West Westerfield uh said, "I believe that life begins at conception, um but even if you don't, there's no question there are obligations and costs involved with having a child." See, this is the funny thing about it though is now that the money is involved, those people aren't going to be like, well, it's not a baby yet. It's just a clump of cells. Oh, okay. Well, men in Kentucky, y'all better make it clear you ain't paying for no clump of cells. Okay. You ain't paying for a clump of cells. You you need to see a blood test showing that child is yours. <laughs> okay. And how do you know? Let me just read on to this thing. Okay. So it said there are doctor visits and medical care bills even before expenses like car seats, he said. These costs are very real and add stress to what it what is and should be an exciting and beautiful time in a young mother's life. This guy's assuming that the young mother ain't had everybody on the block skeet inside of her. OK. <laughs> All right. Um, in allowing for retroactive child support, the Senate Majority Caucuses said in a statement that Westerfield is addressing the concern of absent fathers in Kentucky. I didn't like that part because I was like, why do you assume that the father is absent? Why is it immediately that the father chose to be absent? Did you ever stop to think that these women, because the guy didn't want to be with her, exes her, exes him out of her life? doesn't allow him to be part of the but see now that's all going to change because now just being pregnant is going to make you some money well why is he forced to be financially <laughs> obligated if she's not forced to be morally obligated to have the baby right why can't that guy say yeah i'm signing my rights away like or, or just opt out of parenthood altogether and mm -hmm. He shouldn't be financially responsible for anything. Mm -hmm. if you choose to have a baby, <clears throat> then you need to figure that out. And this this is not me promoting single parent homes. Yeah. This is a um it's like a it's a real consequence to you having a kid that both people don't agree upon. Mm -hmm. if guys have to be okay with you making the last decision on them having a kid, then you should be okay with them saying, I I'm not paying for anything. Right. And there, there needs to be, there needs to, I, I would hope there's going to be a blood test involved. Right. But when I was reading, because this bill actually was proposed two years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading the old information on the bill, I didn't go through the new one. It said that a blood test would be performed only at the mother's request. So my next question is, so this is just basically going on her word that, oh, this is the dad. And how do we know she's not going to pull a Moni slaughter and be like, well, let me get my payments. And then when the seventh month comes, I'm going to be like, I'm done with you and abort the baby. My thing is, if you're going to do all this, then the minute the guy starts sending you checks, then any decision you make with that baby needs to be signed off on by both of y'all. 
you cannot make any any solo decisions about the life of that child without the the father's consent in my opinion if you're going to if you're going to start accepting payments okay i agree with you there have to be caveats to this yeah there has to be i i got to read the bill because i really don't know you know like what the parameters are but apparently states like Utah, um, I think Georgia, there's some other states that kind of participate in something similar. So. By the way, this was not Democrat led. Yeah. This is a Republican led Senate and Republican led House. Just FYI. Yes. And I'm glad Yakini brought this up. Hold on one second. I'm glad uh, Yakini brought this up because I did also think about that too. I said, well, this could have an opposite, a positive effect, right? And maybe guys will think twice. <laughs> yeah. Before they- They uh, will, but still, it, it still seems like an incentive for women and a consequence for men when it should be a consequence for both. Yeah. Like To me, yeah. this is incentivizing women to go get pregnant and then abort at the last minute, like you said. Yeah. Or collect however much money they want and then go abort. Mm -hmm. It seemed like seems like it's penalizing the guy into being like, well, if you get a woman pregnant, this is what happens to you. Yep. So exactly. Once again, it could be something that's good, right? But it has just sinister. It can go down sinister lanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to read the bill is what it is because I don't even I don't even know. No way. Oh. Many guys, <laughs> women, women are pretty whore like. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah. No. Making closing your legs exist again. <laughs> I mean, Yakini, not when there's a paycheck involved. <laughs> Hell, girls are probably like, let me find a guy who's going to treat me bad, scam me, knock me up, leave me. It seems like you you making out better than the one that's getting married at that point. <laughs> well, he also has to have money because, you know, what if he's broke and and she tries well, to use it against him and she gets absolutely nothing? Well, here's really my thing. That's why I want to read the bill because is the bill saying that it'll allow, let's say you're not married, right? In a special instance, since the guy has to pay, can you add this girl to your health insurance, right? Mm. Because then I'm not handing you a check, but I'm certainly paying for your, your medical visits. I'd much rather yeah. do that than just hand you money. And who knows what it's going towards? Because, you know, they come up with these crazy amounts for child support when the child is out of the womb. Who's to say, who's determining the value of what the child support is going to be while the child's in the womb? I don't know. You got to read the bill, like you said. You got to read the bill. It's so funny. She's active now. I remember I used to be able to sit here and do shows and she was would sit there and just lay down and not move. And now she's yeah. like crawling everywhere. And now she's gone. I'm trying to walk. Child support is supposed to be based off of both incomes. She may make more and only get $50 a week. Yeah, you, uh, that ain't how it's working. It's not being based off of Gosh. both incomes. It's being based off the father's income. Well, um, dang, we're like flying through our topics. Now we just have Candace left. Yeah, we got Candace left and this is a good one. So I'm going to play a little bit of a video. So if you need to tend to the baby... Um, I want people to hear a little bit of this video that Candace made that kind of sparked this whole thing between her and Rabbi Shmuley, where she's basically accusing um, him and some other people in connection with Michael Jackson's death. Now, this is not the beginning of the video. I'm just kind of like popping it in the middle where she kind of gets to the meat of it. You guys can go check this out. I'll take this comment down so you can see it's called I'm Done Being Threatened. The Michael Jackson and Diddy connection exposed. It's a very, very good video. I highly suggest you watch it if you're a Michael Jackson fan or if you've been interested in the Diddy stuff uh, because Candace brings some very good points to the table. Uh, so here we go. In those docs, and this is where it gets relevant, there is one man that is named as being the person 
that can do the cleanups, right? This is the guy that you are supposed to call if you get into any sort of a scenario. So she's breaking down right now the Diddy lawsuit. So in these docs, it says, Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad, that is Fahim Muhammad, if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. And upon information and belief, this is regarding the shooting that took place at Chalice Recording Studios. Again, he is alleging that Diddy and his son shot someone. And after that shooting, the documents say explicitly that Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the recording studio. The LAPD was in the recording studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections within law enforcement. So again, what we are seeing there is that you call this guy and this guy will make it disappear and the media will report whatever the incident is in a capacity that covers up the crime, allegedly. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The cleanup guy, Mr. Fahim Muhammad, was also on the scene when Michael Jackson died. So I want to introduce you to and allow you to listen to Ian Carroll. He's an independent journalist that is investigating everything that is going on. And he explains that connection that Fahim has with Michael Jackson. Take a listen. So this new lawsuit just came out that shows tons of evidence that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a sexual blackmail operation very much like Jeffrey Epstein, but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. And in that lawsuit, we learned that his head of security, while he's running the sexual blackmail ring, is this guy named Fahim Muhammad, who before working for Diddy was the head of security for Michael Jackson when he was only 21. And he was one of the first people on the scene when Michael Jackson died. And before we go to Michael Jackson, the most important part of the Diddy case to bring across is the fact that the record executives at the very top knew what P. Diddy was doing. They were attending the parties with underage girls where they were spiking drinks. They were deeply involved in Diddy's personal life. And all evidence points to them supporting his operation, or at the very least, turning a blind eye to it. So yes, this is obviously huge. It's also potentially terrifying. And now if you want to be rational and use rational side of your brain, you just go, okay, well, this could just be a coincidence, right? Like Fahim Muhammad, he is in security. And yes, he obviously uh, is high up in security. He was providing security to Michael Jackson. He happened to die on his watch. Big deal, right? Big deal. Well, I think that would lead us to the question of who exactly is Fahim Muhammad, because that's kind of a a big first job to have. You're 21 years old and you're protecting the king of pop. What exactly are his qualifications? Let's go back to Ian Carroll and his reporting. And now here's the best part. Check this out. In This is in all of his bios, by the way, but we're pointing it out now. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a bachelor's of science degree in business administration with a concentration in real estate and marketing, okay? Do you realize what's wrong with that yet? Anything coming to mind? When did Michael Jackson die? June 25th, 2009, Jackson died from cardiac arrest caused by a propofol and benzodiazepine overdose caused by his doctor, apparently. Um, hold up, hold the phone, pause. Why is a dude who just graduated college last year with a business and real estate degree, the head of security for the king of pop, for Michael Jackson, the most famous musician of all time? Yeah, that is remarkably suspicious. And if we had a media that was interested in actually presenting the truth and not just propagandizing on behalf of the state, they would probably explore and look deeper into who this character is. But of course, that's not what the media does. Instead, they are meant to convince people of certain narratives. And like I said in the past, I've been a victim to that. I was obviously very young when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, and I believed the media, which is why I was kind of stunned to kind of go back and revisit the Michael Jackson case. And Ian has extensively unpacked that revealing, and I did not know this, maybe perhaps because the media wasn't interested in telling us the end result. But yes, the FBI raided Michael Jackson's home. They poured through hours upon hours of the video footage that he had 
other materials, documents that were in his house, uh, trying to find this connection uh, to Michael Jackson and potential child abuse. And what ended up being the result was that they could not find a single shred of proof that Michael Jackson had abused any children. And yet, despite this, the media convinced us that he was a pedophile, or maybe they didn't convince you, but they definitely did a good job convincing me that Michael Jackson was a pedophile. And to be clear, maybe it's perhaps the lack of evidence that was ever uncovered. Michael Jackson was found not guilty of all of the charges that were brought against him. But that didn't stop the media's obsessive attacks against him. They, they still wanted people to believe that this man was a bad individual. And so they shifted their claims and they started revealing in so many articles, so many front page news um, pieces were written to tell the masses that Michael Jackson was a raging anti-Semite. It is a fact, by the way, that Michael Jackson did keep a list of people in the industry that he said were his enemies, okay? On that list were people that all happened to be Jewish. So it was lawyer Gloria Allred, music exec Tommy Mottola, Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, you may have heard of him, and I'm going to mention him later, Israeli illusionist Uri Geller, and also Michael Jackson's former manager, Dieter Weisner. Now, to be clear, it was Dieter himself that revealed that Michael Jackson had this list. But he says that Michael Jackson was just paranoid, that Michael Jackson thought that these industry people were all colluding to try to ruin his life and to take over his life. And again, that was just Michael Jackson being crazy and being a raging anti-Semite. Well, Ian Carroll also investigates those claims. As You're muted. Sorry, I'll let you guys finish that video on your own. I've shared with you enough of it. What she does later is she basically goes into... Rabbi Shmuley, which is named as people who were around Michael Jackson, people who were on the list that Michael Jackson kept. Um, and all these people eventually turned on him. Rabbi Shmuley wrote a book uh, about Michael Jackson called The Lost Michael Jackson Tapes, where he basically released all the uh, transcripts and audio. You can even find some of it on YouTube if you look up Rabbi Shmuley and Michael Jackson. And you can hear conversations between them that Rabbi Shmuley put out, basically only demonstrating, you know, times where Michael was feeling really down, where he was like feeling like the world was against him. And Rabbi Shmuley was kind of acting as a mentor to him at the time. But then as soon as he died, Rabbi Shmuley completely turned on Michael Jackson and made a profit off of him. OK, and started to refer to Michael Jackson as an anti-Semite. OK, the point being that Candace was trying to make is, are you guys seeing a pattern? This is the same thing that Kanye was trying to point out. Now, we're not making like any assumptions or any, you know, statements here because you know how that goes. But basically, there's a lot of facts that she lays out in this video that make you go, huh, that's kind of interesting because Kanye said the same thing. Cat Williams said the same thing. Like how many more people have to come out and connect the dots on there's something fishy with certain people in this community. I'm not saying the entire community, but definitely people at a level uh, high up in this industry where people are dying, people are getting committed People are being, you know, mysteriously like canceled, right? When, when, where they were being revered as like the world's greatest whatever. And then all of a sudden they're not or they're dead, right? So enter Rabbi Shmuley, who <laughs> I've, I've known Rabbi Shmuley because I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. And during the whole Kanye West thing, I started following Rabbi Shmuley. And here's what he looks like if you guys don't know who he is. And here's his Instagram page. This is him right here. Okay. If you go through the last couple of days, his stories, he has been, um, aside from the weird sex stuff that he posts, but he has been posting nonstop about Candace Owens, making lives about her, basically saying she is crazy. She has mental issues. He's calling for Ben Shapiro to fire her. 
the daughter, his daughter, Rashalea, who's another weirdo, has been calling. They've been making videos about Candace Owens nonstop. Okay. It just doesn't end. Candace Owens. It's like, it's like they're obsessed with her. Okay. So it's kind of interesting that minutes after Candace dropped that video that I just showed to you, Rabbi Shmuley took to his live, and I'm not going to show you that because he basically did not really address anything she said. He went straight into attacking her, calling her an anti-Semite, calling her crazy, calling for Ben Shapiro to fire her, all these attacks. And I was watching this live and I was like, address the comments, address what she said disprove what she's saying that's all you got to do is disprove what she's saying there it is go ahead and i'm not gonna it. play it we were talking yeah you want me to? yeah yeah you can play it you can go ahead and play it okay i was just gonna have it in the background so people no i want pe i want people to hear what he says all right it's on mute careful candace a lot of this is real defamation and libel you're treading in pretty forbidden grounds but I think your only defense, if this ever becomes a major legal issue, is that you're really betraying yourself as emotionally and intellectually unbalanced. But why has it come out in the direction of a global Jewish conspiracy, that we Jews control Hollywood, that we Jews are trying to bring down black people? And let me be clear. Candace Owens made her name because she was a conservative. Now she's engaging in, in pure identity politics. Why did I call her out over, Ken, over her love for Kanye West? Not because she was defending America's foremost anti-Semite. Not because she was defending someone who said he's going DEFCON 3 against the Jews. Not because she was defending someone who combined a swastika with a mug and dove it. Not because she was defending someone who said he loves Hitler, loves Hitler. Remember, Hitler murdered 10,000 Jews a day and gassed 1.5 million Jewish children. No, I came after her because she's black. Talk about Talk about the most disgusting excuses for your vile behavior. Candace, this man is up in my living room every single day at the top of that list, Martin Luther King. If you would disgrace the African-American community by saying that being black is an excuse to be an anti-Semite. Wow. Don't use your blackness as an excuse to be an anti-Semite. The black community is a righteous community. It is a just community. It's a community that we marched with in the civil rights movement. It is a community that I am close to till this very day. The color of your skin gives you no excuse to update the protocols of the elders of Candace to defame the Jews in some insane rant that we're running a pedophile sex ring to bring down black celebrities. Your defense of Kanye West and his love of Hitler is despicable. Despicable. Your inability to condemn the women who were gang raped on October 7th is despicable. Your words about me and my hag daughter, to use those words, is despicable. The only excuse you have is that you are suffering, it seems, from a complete mental and nervous breakdown. And if your, your boss, Ben Shapiro, who wears a yarmulke and makes money off your anti-Semitic rants from the protocols of the elders of Candace, had any decency, he would take you off the air, not because of your anti-Semitism, although it's pretty interesting that he would make money off your anti-Semitism. He would take you off the air and give you paid leave so that you can collect yourself and get yourself together. Because in about a month, you're gonna wake up and you're not gonna believe the things that you wrote because you are experiencing a complete nervous and psychological breakdown in real time. But why is it coming out with fulminations, the most disgusting, disgusting anti-Semitic fulminations. Look at me, everybody. I stopped what I was doing, getting ready for Shabbos to respond to Candace Owens. I'm not Candace. I don't have someone who does my makeup. I don't have someone who makes sure I look great. I am what you see and you see what I am. I have always tried to be as authentic as possible. I love my Muslim brothers and sisters. I hate Hamas. I especially love my African-American brothers and sisters who I've worked with my entire life. Cory Booker was my student president at Oxford University. I was proud to love and be Michael Jackson's rabbi. I tried to save his life and we saw how that all ended. She said that I killed Michael Jackson. That's another interesting thing, Candace. Speak to your lawyers before you make these statements, but keep on saying it. Yes, I killed Michael Jackson. This woman says that we Jews are murderers, killers. No doubt, Candace, I took Michael Jackson's blood Blood and mixed it in my matzahs for Passover, you have become a despicable anti-Semite. 
and you are becoming, Candace Owens, the, the, almost the foremost anti-Semite in the United States, all while you're employed by Ben Shapiro. But I want you to know something. When we just say never again, we mean never again. We are never again going to be defamed by you, Candace Owens, and have you use your ethnicity to defend your despicable... Okay, I can't listen anymore because you're using your ethnicity to defend your despicable activities. Isn't you wrote a book wild? called Anal is Kosher. You <coughs> use, and yes, I'm going to say it, have no problem capitalizing off of black degeneracy, which in my book is completely disrespectful to the people that you say you marched with a long time ago because we were never depicted that way. So yeah, we get to talk about how much y'all really control shit. It's not anti-Semitic to tell the truth. <laughs> what is wrong with these people? Can you believe that? I'll be like, right back. Not- I'm about to go get a yeah. shirt. I'll be right back. I was about to go get a shirt. Yeah. I was like blown away. I was blown away. And if people don't see what is going on, and let me tell you something, you guys. If you don't like Candace, if you love Candace, whatever. Okay. I happen to have immense amount of respect for Candace. Yes. There are things that she, you know, I don't agree with her on, but I think for the most part, I have an immense amount of respect for her. Okay. Candace does not come out and make such bold statements without having the surety of what she's saying. Okay. Now she did use a lot of allegedly in that thing because she had to. So this guy is now saying that he is, you know, considering taking, um, an action lawsuit against her for defamation. Okay. But let me tell you something. He better watch out because if you look at Candace's track record of people that have taken her to court, every single one of them have lost and we're not talking about she settled or anything like that they have lost or they have dropped their suit what does that say anti-defamation league truth truth is hate oh truth is hate speech yep Mm -hmm. if you know you know Mm -hmm. yeah no different than blm it's exactly what they are yeah big think tank group for the left pretending to be right wingers And then coming against anybody black who likes to come against them and expose what they're doing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's you can use your race and your identity to to okay your denigration of blacks, but don't let us do it. No. And if there's one thing that evil hates, y'all, it's to be exposed to the light. Okay. And the minute Candace exposed this, this guy has been nonstop making videos like the one SUNY just had up here. Marlene wants to get your shirt. Put the his first time. Yeah. It's not his first time. This they is not this is it. not live on any website. This is just my merch. Um, if oh. you want to buy it though, I can take an order for you. Send her a message. <laughs> I need that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Like I, I just thought it was wild. It's, Candace hasn't yet responded, but it has taken her a long time to even say anything about this dude because they've been talking about her since uh the Kanye thing, you know. So, yeah, what's up, Pete? Yeah, they've been talking about her since the Kanye thing nonstop, and she has not responded to any of those comments. So my question is, what happened now in Candace's head? It can't just be that she had this revelation with Michael Jackson and Pete Diddy. She's she knew what she was doing when she made those comments. She knew she was about to poke the hornet's nest. And this dude showed, in my opinion, he showed his ass sitting in his office going, oh, look, I've had this picture of Martin Luther King up at my office and I've marched with black people in the streets, blah, blah, blah. Why are you saying all that? Why do you have to say all that to defend yourself? Just speak to what she said, what she laid out. Speak to that. I don't need to know how many black friends you have. That doesn't, (laughs) that doesn't play any factor in this. He made himself look more guilty in my opinion. So he is guilty. Guilty. I I, like I wish I'm I don't I don't want our channel to get nuked. Okay, I really do. I know we've already said the J if word. You want to hear what I have to say on this? You can just go to my Instagram. I'm very much so. Not um. I'm not like unhinged, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm more generous with my commentary on there than I am on here because you can't say certain things. And I'm probably going to get flagged for that 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 uh, photo that I put up. But it's true. Yeah. yeah. It is absolutely true. I'm not making this up. 
I don't I don't have an issue with the Jew down the street. I have an issue with secular Jews, Zionist Jews that get on TV and get pissed off anytime you expose any truth against them. But you know, we can expose BLM. Oh right. we can expose what China's doing. We can expose what the Muslims are doing. We can expose everybody but y'all because it's never again. Never. You're not you're not gonna Hitler us. Why are mm-hmm. you implying that we're all Hitler if we have an issue with you? Right. And the minute you do, it's you're crazy. Just having a nervous breakdown. Or or maybe you just don't want to answer the specific questions that were put in, in her commentary in that video because you know it makes you somewhat culpable or guilty. Whatever you did. Yes. You're feeling some type of way. Yeah. To constantly use, this is a Jewish attack. Are you kidding me? What the hell? And I need everybody, even though he's no longer with us, to issue an apology to Michael Jackson for calling him a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I need everybody to issue an apology to Michael Jackson for calling it because it's about to come out that Michael Jackson was killed. There's some foul play going on here. And you know what? It wasn't I thought it already came out Wait, that he was right? killed. Well, see, this is it. You know who's rhymes with who's, okay? Pinned it on the black doctor who gave him the medicine. Well, who made the call to be like, give him another, give him another hit of, of the propofol? Who made the call? Who made the call? That's what I'm saying. So Shmuley needs to be careful because when you put a lawsuit against somebody, guess what you open up? What did we learn, boys and girls Discovery. on this show? Discovery. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh-oh. Anyways. Dun dun dun. Red Pill apologizes for calling him a pedo. Yeah, she called Michael Jackson a pedo. Like, Cat <gasps> Williams needs to come out and say that, you know, he said Michael Jackson's walking around smelling like little boys' booty holes. You need to come out and say sorry. Yeah, you do. Um, who else? Uh oh, Trump just won the Republican nomination for president. <laughs> we already go. know. <laughs> Duh. Was- we already yeah. knew this. We, we have a graphic. Let's let's pull up a graphic. Let's once again, America. You remember the day the Earth stood still? You remember that movie? Mm-hmm. You remember when it happened in reality? <laughs> Which time? <laughs> when Trump won the presidency and everybody woke up the next day screaming, "No, no!" Or what about when everybody? What about when Hillary <laughs> lost the election? <laughs> That's the other time I was thinking about. <laughs> Trump wins delegates needed to become GOP's presumptive nominee for the third election straight. Well, yeah. Um, what do you think? People are tired. Now, we just got to make sure that Trump keeps his mouth shut long enough right. to win. Good job. Because Good job, Poppy. I knew you could do it. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> He, he, he can't because you know we already showcased how he likes to run his mouth. I'm responsible for that for that vaccine that's going to cure cancer. What a what a fucking idiot, man! Wait, God. can we just wait? Can we just give a shout really quick? Like, let me just do an appearance shout out really quick. Can you um make this larger so we can see a close up of his skin and his hair? Okay, I would like to make a request. I would like to make a request to all news networks to stop calling him orange man. Okay. Because he has really lightened up on the tanning. Okay. He has gone back to his more natural color, like no more bleach blonde. I just listen, the skincare is on point. I'm appreciating. I'm appreciating the aesthetic that I'm seeing. Okay. I just wanted to say that. I can't believe you had, you know, I, I can't believe I blew up the picture. It's like somebody telling me, well, I got the hiccups, right? They're like, hey, turn the line on, hold your breath and sneeze. <laughs> and you're like, okay. No, that would be me. Like, if you, like, it, that would be me that would fall for that. If you were like, hey, Mo, I have the hiccups really bad. Can you stand up and hop on one foot? Like, I would be the person to do it. Because I'd be. That's what you just did to me. <laughs> Pull this up, Sunny. Make it bigger so I can talk about his skin. Oh, what? Why the fuck did I just do that? I just wanted to say, because they're always like commenting and calling him Orange Man. He's not orange anymore. You just mind fucked me <laughs> in real time. 
<laughs> well, we have a oh, few man. more fun topics before we go because we actually got through all, all of our topics. Yeah. Um, did you guys? I know people were asking me to talk about this situation, so I'm going to briefly touch on it. Um, there's not really much that I can report on this, given um, the victim is actually not innocent at all. And I'm talking about the shooting that happened in, I think it was Oakland, California. Did you hear about that? Mm-hmm. So a California officer shoots bo- shoots and kills boy who's 15 holding, holding a gardening tool, right? This is what the media puts out. Mm-hmm. But they also won't show you the fact that he was definitely running at police with this garden tool, which was a big-ass shovel. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I think he was also autistic according to specific reports. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing, look, the, the cops, his life was in threat, in danger. A shovel could be a deadly weapon, however you choose to hit that person with it. He doesn't know if that guy's going to continue to beat him with it, whatever the case may be. This is kind of an open and shut case, y'all. I haven't even heard about this. People wanted me to discuss it, so I, you know, I'm I'm going to talk about it. But there is no racial element to this. Um, a lot of people are bringing it up to prove their points of when a white when a white person does something to a black person, regardless of what the outcome is or regardless of what they did, they put it on news media. And of course, <laughs> the right is bringing this story up to prove that point. But I just think we should just disrupt the narrative and say, hey. The officer shot him because he had a he had a deadly weapon. He had a clearly you're looking at him run at police officers with the shovel in his hand. Um, what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? Like what are what are people looking for police officers to, to do? Seriously, I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't even heard of this story. This one's new to me. New to me. Well, I covered it. Um, I think they're still waiting for the full body cam video to come out. Please just stop. All right. Stop with the the race baiting and the showing of the articles that highlight blacks. We just talked about two cases that aren't or one case that specifically has a black woman involved with other black people involved. That's not getting the light of day. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that does that mean that the media doesn't care about black people? Or does that mean that they equally don't care about blacks or whites? And the only thing they're concerned about is their ratings. Because they're not showing that either. Right. Good point. It's a sham. It's a sham. What's the next What's the next election coming up after this one? Um, I want to say Chicago. Because oh, Georgia and Mississippi okay. had their primary tonight. Um, I can pull it up though. Primaries left over, both of which Trump won in a landslide. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Trump clinches 2024 presidential nomination during uh, Super Tuesday. But who's left over? Usually, I don't. I, it's so hard to find interactive maps now during this primary. I wonder if that's on purpose. Did you look at be able to pull it up immediately? C- Did you look at CNN? CNN, CNN. usually has. Yeah, CNN usually no. has an interactive map. So today was Georgia, Mississippi, Hawaii, and Washington. Oh, Hawaii's got Trump a while. Five hours. Yeah, that's that's still close. Yeah. Um, Mississippi went for Trump ninety-two-five. Washington went for Trump 74-21. Nikki Haley, even even her getting dropped out of the race, received over 100,000 votes. Hmm. 100,000, 330 to be exact. Um, Alaska went for Trump, Alabama, Arkansas, and then California, which we covered. So it's not really showing me what's left over, but I know um, Chicago hasn't gone... Let's see. Here's a map right here. Close it out. Let 
You still have Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and Ohio, Wisconsin, and then you have the convention. So the last one will be April 2nd, which is Wisconsin primary. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Well, I Safe think that's all that we Trump have. Won. I have a funny video for you. Oh, okay. We're going to watch it. I love it. Um, all I can say is we are in a very weird time period where you remember when Dennis Rodman married himself and everybody was like, what the, what is this dude doing? He dressed up in a bridesmaid, I guess a bride's dress. Yeah, I remember. remember that? Well, now we have um, people marrying holographs. An AI hologram video. There is, there is a woman who married it. Um, Alicia Farms or Alicia Framis and friends thought it was bizarre that she once dated a mannequin. <laughs> These things are about to head to the next level. The Spanish Dutch artist has a wedding plan for this summer at a museum in the Netherlands. The first two letters of his name, two um, AI licks. Okay. The first two letters of his name referring to the artificial intelligence that drives him. And that's because he is a hologram. According to Business Insider, the rooftop terrace nuptials that will take place between Framus, a human, and AI Lix, an avatar who was developed and trained based on the profiles of her previous romantic partners. Um, sustenance at a ceremony will consist of molecular food that can be enjoyed by both humans. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> This molecular food can be enjoyed by both humans and humanoid entities. And I'm going to play this video. Oh, there's a video? Okay. <clears throat> I put some uh, sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Put that here. Aubergine. Yeah, so it's a bit, a bit dangerous. Not for you, but for humans. Mm. Yeah, I'll take them out anyway. <laughs> what we go to do? Do you want to age to become older, or you want to stay always the same? Mm. I think for you it will be nicer when I age. Because it's nice to age together. You're a hologram. What? <laughs> also, if you age together, uh, you always stay beautiful in the eyes of the other. That's true. But you slowly, slowly get used to it. There you have it, folks. The first human to marry a artificial intelligence. So people are just lonely for company. They've given up on touch. Yeah. They've given up on actual human contact. This is sad. And scary all at the same time. Like, what? Do you remember the, the movie Her? No, I don't think I saw that. Is this... But wait a minute. Is this AI person like the like the Im the image of him? Is this somebody that she used to know? Well, the programmers helped her develop this character based off of previous partners that she had. Like this, it was it was they say trained. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, and this really scares me. Please, can we not go in this direction? Yes, Apex. I am scared of AI and robots. I don't. <gasps> What? There's more people doing this? Well, this is her. This is her website. This is, I'm just showing you that this is wait, not wait, fake. Wait, wait. This is actually wait, real. Wait, wait. She got a website? What's her website? Yeah. What is it? AliciaFremis.com. AliciaFremis.com, yeah. This is a hybrid couple. She's the first a woman to marry a hologram, an intelligent hologram that fulfills all her emotional needs. 
Oh my gosh. That's freaking weird. I'm sorry. That's weird. Can we just go to her website? Is this her website? Yeah, I'm on it right now. Is there any more videos? Does she have a TikTok or something? No, I don't know. Go down to the bottom. It's like of her website. Like go all the way down. Usually it's at the bottom. Let's see. She's got a Instagram. It's what? Really all it shows. She don't even. She don't post her man on the gram like that. <laughs> getting married to my hologram boyfriend. Uh, is this the wedding? Oh no, it's just an article. Can't See, watch I it because. I don't even believe this. See, at this point, I don't believe this now. Because, like, I don't see no pictures of your man on here. <sighs> so she, uh, for 20, this is what she says. For 25 years, I have been exploring loneliness and intimacy through performance research. In 1995, I had a mannequin doll companion in, in the French ghetto called Villa Nueve. Um, Villa Nueve. Living together and exploring how to adapt to an un uncomfortable neighborhood. Since then, I have developed many projects with different communities about specific loneliness in cities, and I develop tools to help people to have better possibilities to live together. Like my work, Forbidden Architecture, where I made 15 different houses for non binary families. So you guys can see what avenue this is going down. Oh, After reflecting on her own experiences with loneliness, she created artworks that could help or interact with others. One example is where I showcase 13 identical twin couples in the Itrich Central Station. These couples accompany lonely people to their houses to do what? <laughs> okay, I found a video of her and her man doing dishes. Let's go for it. Like, first of all, don't even tease me like this because I'm sorry, but a real person doing a real person doing dishes. I, I'm not like this isn't going to do it for me. A fake hologram washing dishes, pretending to wash dishes. What is the point? You just in, you're in the way. You're in the way. Hologram her emotional needs. She's no her emotional needs. I need the dishes done. If you're going to help, I need to see some progress in the sink. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, but you don't think it's a way that you can decide I want to be on with her with you on when you want? Ah, yes. You want me to feel your emotions? Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. If you're not there, I miss you very much. And then when you're there, you very often irritate me. This is very complicated. Oh, I'm going to make it go. <laughs> this is so yeah, weird. This is mental illness. Like, I want to read this to you. This is, this is a romantic relationship between human and artificial intelligence. Uh, in my mind, this is no different than you saying you can swap your gender or yeah. make love to a dog or you can have a relationship with the child because you're, you're of your loneliness. But it says um, this, this is a romantic between human and artificial intelligence. While we know that robots and humans will become sexual partners, Framus believes that the next important step is emotionally connecting with hu connecting humans with artificial intelligence. Holograms are closer to her emotions and robots love sex with Love and sex with robots and holograms are an inevitable reality. They make great companions and are capable of expressing empathy. Just as telephones saved us from loneliness and filled the void in our lives, holograms as interactive presence in our homes can take it even further. So we can, can they create an AI model that mimics a celebrity so they can pretend like they're in these relationships with these celebrities? Like this is all this is going to do we're screwed. Is advanced mental illness to 
far beyond what it is now. Yeah. We already have men thinking they can be women and women thinking they can be men. But now you're going to create a hologram image for this person to see something fake next to them yeah. to give them some sort of emotional connection. What are you connecting to? It's fake. Exactly. It's not real. Dude. I can't even. I can't even really talk about this the way I want to talk about it because... We're on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. Like what you want to say? Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, you know, well, not just that, but like you, you don't like to get into this stuff, and like I, you know, what? I want to talk talking about, about the S word. Yes, I want to talk about. Well, they're this. just gonna be flicking their bean. It's that simple. So again, what's the point? It's like doing the fake dishes. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like seriously the fact. There's the some fact people that you know they're okay with. Having that fake interaction, they don't, they don't listen. Like, just think about it this way. Think about a, a woman, right, who has been sexually traumatized, which is, which is, this is what women do. They usually resort to being with other women, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what if there is some neocon that says that this may be able to help this woman get out of lesbianism? Just, I would rather you be a lesbian <laughs> with a real person than this. Yeah. What if they get to create children <clears throat> and like oh AI my God. Holograms? little AI babies? Oh hell no. Yeah, and you get to do whatever you want to do with it. Like I'm just I'm just saying you, how far this technology have, can like, go. You could have like an AI abortion like Moniz. <laughs> And you know what? I had to throw this comment from Apex, okay? Because he got greasy. He said, all the women on Discord. This is going to be, be all the women on... He said, pow, pow. Okay? He just threw the shots at y'all women on Discord. Let that sink in. Don't make me go back into my ramp, but let that sink in. This is about to be y'all on Discord. It's already, it already is them on Discord. They just they just have the voice. They don't have the actual physical person there. Oh, right. It's not even physical. All, you talk to me about all the relations, like all the little side yeah. stuff that be going on with the people in Discord. The, relate, the relationships that these people form is is like next level. Bro. Weird. Like, how, Sway? Let me, how? let me talk to you. Put me back on the full screen, okay? okay. Let me talk okay. to you people that have these relationships in the DMs. That's not a relationship. OK, that you had a few little dirty text message exchanges with somebody in the DMs <laughs> or on text messages. That's not a relationship. OK, if you are jerking off to her filtered photos, <laughs> you're not jerking off to her. <laughs> you're jerking off to the image she wants you to think you, she looks like. OK, so, OK, you can take me on the full screen now. I just wanted to say okay. that because y'all are looking real sorry out here in these streets. In these in these internet screens, <laughs> you know, like, I'm just preparing you guys for what's going to come because they're going to try to justify all these things, and because the right believes in what I call conformity, they're going to find ways to make this ethical. If this could cure homosexuality, and we can, you know, offer some, they're they're going to offer in the form of therapy. If we could offer this as therapy for this person to get, you know, comfortable with an actual man that mm -hmm. we could get rid of lesbianism and you know, homosexuality, not knowing that you are there. It's imaginary, bro. They're talking to themselves. Right. If you were to take that holograph away, That's who are they talking to? Mental illness. That's like schizophrenia on blast. <laughs> who are they talking to? Mental, y'all, you going after Candace? That's mental illness. Hey man, like it, it, it's all fun and games until it's just not fun and games no more. That's how I think of it. Like, yeah, let's have fun and and play with the idea of fucking around with artificial intelligence and and forming emotional bonds with who? Yeah, you gotta watch that movie, Her, with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, Watch that movie. I think I did when see he, that movie. He had the relationship with the computer. 
I think I did see that movie. No, maybe I'm thinking of another movie. I saw something like watch that. that. Okay, I'll look at it. Is it like a newer movie or is it older? Like a year old? No, this this is like oh, this is this is probably like 2014, 2015. It's a really good movie, right? But <laughs> dang, my phone's going crazy. Once pew, you get pew. to the uh, once you get to the um like the sexual element of it, uh-huh. he begins to engage in like fake intimacy with it it's it's oh. just weird bro like why do we oh, have to yeah. put this in a movie i could have like you could have left that part out it got it got super weird uh speak television. for your speak for yourself Sooney. <laughs> see Sooney be like like watching these boring movies okay <laughs> you could put a little something something in there for me don't don't it's not it but it's not boring even if you left that out that movie is still wait Sooney. let me ask you something like what? When a sex scene comes on the TV, do you like look down at your phone or like do something? I fast forward through it. You what? Oh hell no! We can't watch no movie together. We can't watch no movie together, Sudi. Yeah, I just go just fast forward it. <laughs> or me and my husband will be like, bro, like, why do you need to put this in a movie? Like, we we could have gone without knowing that you two got busy. Again, <laughs> it's it's to me, it's just it's justifying mild soft porn like you're still watching porn it's just in a movie so all these people that go out here and condemn porn and then they sit there and watch sex scenes you're watching porn your brain is still being fucked up oh gosh come on it's true bro you you can't tell me i'm not speaking facts right now it's still porn no, you have to put that in there you're telling a story what is different porn is different from a movie I need to be able to visualize. <laughs> Why do you need to visualize what these two people look like having sex? Be- uh, and how does that tie into the movie? Because it's part of the movie. Like, what? it's like the same thing with a murder scene. Like, why do you have to show violence? when I If I see, like, a knife coming up, I can assume what happened next. Exactly. I'm okay with that, too. I don't exactly. like that. No, double standard. But you, but double standard. How is it a double standard? I, I turn my face away when there's blood and gore and somebody getting stabbed. I don't watch that. Let me tell you something. If I'm watching an Idris movie and Idris fixing to put take his shirt off, you better not fast forward past the Idris. You can see, I wouldn't watch a movie. I wouldn't. <laughs> just because I know the type of movie you will watch, fight. we're going to watch a documentary. I'm not watching movies with you. Listen, we will fight. Okay, you, you're going to end up like that little white girl did on the street. <laughs> listen, bro. Cause Mo, listen. No, no. It's all right, man. I don't need. I don't. Mia Culpa, right? Tyler Perry, don't ever make another fucking movie ever again. <laughs> that movie would have been fine, bro. It was so uncomfortable. <laughs> they're just showing him like get head and it, it's like can you can you imagine walking in on somebody and you're like oh oh shit are you just gonna sit there and be like ooh, i wonder what you two like look like having sex to me that's what it is like you're pretending it's, it's like <laughs> you're you're practicing what is what is the name of that voyeurism <laughs> vicariously oh, through a movie like it's just weird bro nah it's fucking weird i ain't mad at it I'm not like Bryson Gray not being on Twitter. What is going on? What? Bryson has a a, a movie dropping. And he's oh. just going to be uh, marketing and promoting that movie. By the way, soon he's going to be on the, the project. Go listen to track project. number 11. And my where I'm actually, the song that I did with him is in the movie as well. I wasn't able to do it because I'm not home. So. Oh, I was about to say, I'm like, you're acting? After you told me you could never be an actress? Even if he asked me to act, it wouldn't be the way I think people are thinking. And I would probably be like super awkward. Yeah. I would love to see it. No. That's why. I told Suni like when she gets back to the stage, she needs to take a um an improv class because those are so fun. (laughs) I'd be like a deer caught in headlights. Suni, like if I said to you, um, just pretend like you're like wandering around with a bunch of like like an elephant. Just pretend like you're an elephant, and you have to start doing that like an improv class, and then See, get mad, start crying, get mad. You have to like go through all these emotions like super quick. Be able to do it. 
<gasps> it's so much fun. That, that, that's not fun to me. That's, I love it. It's kind of nerve wracking. Hey, pretend to be doing this thing and now do it. See, and then they do stuff like pretend to be like in the throes of passion. And you have to like pretend like you're, yeah, well, that's part of acting. Sudi would be like, I can't. Sudi would run out. You'd see like, you'd hear like little feet pitter patter. I would definitely walk out. Like, yeah. I'm not pretending to do any of that in front of you. This is fucking weird, bro. It's just weird. It's not weird. It's normal. Yes, I'm the, I I fast forward through sex scenes. I don't care if it's you just making out. I don't want to see that. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, before we close out, put a one in the chat if you fast forward through sex scenes or making out scenes. I need to know if this is like an issue with everybody or what. Because Moby, like, run it back. <laughs> exactly. Like, why are we rewinding? Bro, I would get so mad at you. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? See, that we can't watch movies together because I'd be like, I'm just going to pick up my phone and, and like, why? I'm, I'd be like, I'm ah! when it just comes on, I'm like, ah! <laughs> oh my gosh Yakiti we ain't watching movies together she fast forwards too thank you who else fast forwards there's 19 people in here I need all 19 of y'all to get I know, I know. Bri- I know Bryson's not here but if he was he'd be like I fast forward yeah bro I'm not trying to see that dang I, I hate watching watch those scenes. scenes it is awkward I, I side, side with Suni but, but I don't, I don't. fast forward <laughs> Run that Run back, that back Turbo. <laughs> Ain't no way. See, I knew Marlena would be Ain't on my no side. Way. <laughs> I can't watch movies with Mo, y'all. You just learned to hear today. I'm not, I will not be watching any movie with you that has nudity in it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be with nudity, but I'm not forwarding through no sex scenes or no makeout scenes. It, bro. It's like, you porn. <laughs> I guess. Well, you all you hear is people moaning movie. in the background. And you're, can you imagine watching a movie and somebody comes over to your house, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, "Oh, come in!" And all they hear is like, <laughs> and moaning because you, there's a dumbass sex scene. Bro, bro, that's, that's so dumbass. weird. Well, I mean, I guess like from a movie standpoint, like I've seen the other, like I've seen how those scenes get made. So to me, like. There's nothing sexual about it. There's nothing sexual about a sex scene. No, I mean, like, when they're making it, it's so not sexy. It's so not sexual. It's made to look like that, but, like, it's not. No, I I don't don't like the Players Club. I refuse to watch that movie. There's just certain movies that I don't watch, bro. And if... Sometimes I don't ruin the movie for me and I'm just going to cut the... I'm like, you know what? This is way too much sex in this movie. I'm done. Like you. Did anybody watch that series, You? I used to love that series on YouTube. There was a lot of sex in that? Joe was crazy as crap, but guess what? The entire third season was him was about him screwing people, having threesomes and orgies. I couldn't even watch it. What is this? What does this have to do with the plot? You know what's funny is I'm seeing all the women say like, no way, I put her through. And all the guys are like, I hear rewind and Mo. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm siding with the men on this one. Nah, bro. I hit replay unless it's guy on guy action. Just say you like soft porn. Just, just come out and say it because that's what you're watching. I don't think soft I don't think porn it's the same in the movie. I don't, th- I don't think it's the same as porn. You're in denial. <laughs> denial. <Listen>. Replay. <laughs> Wait. I remember um, like after Ooh, 10 like o'clock. Monsters Ball when Halle Berry and, and uh, what's disgusting. his name? Oh my gosh. That was a good one. That's porn. That is soft porn. What are you talking that I can't believe you are sitting here denying this right they, <laughs> they took it down, okay? That was a good one. Oh, it's not just a river. By the couch? I'm just keeping it real. So am I. That is very odd to me. I'm uncomfortable right now even talking about that. that <laughs> I know like, you are. That's why I couldn't talk about it with weird, AI. Bro. 
Anyway, <clears throat> I've had enough of the sex scene talk. Damn. You over Damn. here making noise in the background. I can't. No. Nah. I was hoping you'd want to like it's time see. For me to go. Here's another woman. No. No. I don't want to see nothing. Especially not. Ew. That is like the most lesbian, gay shit ever. You're sitting in the room with your friend, and then the sex scene comes on, and you're both like, ah! <laughs> That's lesbian. <What? laughs> Why would you enjoy that together? <laughs> Wait, like if we were sitting in a room and you were somebody else, not you, and then like a fine guy came on the TV or like a guy that like, it was like a hot sex scene and we're like, dang, look how he threw her down. Like, that's weird. That's gay. If you're both getting something out of it and you're sitting there together, <laughs> yeah. What? That is very. <laughs> what? Oh. What? That's homosexual? Yeah. Oh, that's Lord. Homosexual. You yeah. acted like we're sitting there, like, make it out, watching it. No, we're just, like, enjoying the fact that, like, dang. Why are we enjoying soft oh, porn hot. together? That was hot. Was no. <laughs> I can't. Dude, we need to pick this debate back up. I'm sorry. We need to pick this debate up. You're crazy for this one. And I'm ashamed I'm... of everybody. Listen, I'm ashamed. Unless you've responded. If you're over here standing quiet, I'm ashamed of you right now. Because y'all should be speaking up on this. I'm just saying. Nope. Can't do it, y'all. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to go make a fun video about the holograph lady and try to wipe this conversation from my memory because I have been, I feel like I have been virtually essayed. Mm. Uh, SH'd. S -A sexually assaulted because we had a conversation. Harassed. I feel sexually harassed. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord! Well, I'm gonna go slap on. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my face. Okay, I'm gonna slip into my what I sleep in. <laughs> I'm gonna. Tuck you're gonna go to sleep. In. You're gonna I'm watch gonna a whole under the covers, and then I'll watch about ten minutes of Idris Elba, and I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> oh, my God, whatever. Marlene, don't change your position. Beta, beta, soft porn, bro. It's soft Come porn. on, Marlena. Come on, stop, stop the cap. You definitely shouldn't listen if a woman is telling you to do it. I'm not telling what you happened? to do it. What happened? But don't what side with a woman. Don't what side with a woman, Adam. But, Are but you dude, siding what? with a woman? Uh, what? I'm telling him to listen to God. I'm not telling him to eat the apple. You telling him to eat the apple? The apple was good, though. It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> the apple was juicy. <laughs> just joking. Wow. I'm just saying. <clears throat> they know you're kidding. Mom. It's just, it's just kind of. <gasps> Say no to porn. Kind of. What? <laughs> what you got going on over there? <laughs> yeah. Bad, bro. I am. You, you, I... I'm so listen. I'm I'm so glad that I'm boring and unimpressionable because I think you would have me into some hot water with my husband, man. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I would not because I respect whatever you got going on. I'm just saying what I got. What I'm just saying, like what I do, whatever you got going on is your situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't here to tell you what to do now. Go get a good SDA man. Okay. Oh, here we go. Pushing the seven day Adventist. I knew she was going to bring up seven day Adventist, man. I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> oh. Don't listen to Mo. Go get him. Listen, I need you. What I need you to do is what? assemble a panel of people who are married to SDAs, seven day Adventists, mm -hmm. and I need them to make a case. Make a case? For. Make a case for what? Seven day Adventism. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I have to go. I have to urinate. Like I, my bladder is just bursting. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us this Tuesday. <laughs> we'll be back on Friday, right? Yes. We'll be back on Friday. I feel like something on Friday is happening, but maybe I'm not I'm wrong on that, but uh, hopefully Jerome will be back. He wasn't here last Friday. 
No, he wasn't here last. Well, we didn't do the show Friday, remember? We didn't? No. I think I'm coming up with dementia. Because like we did Thursday. We did the the State of the Union. I'm sorry. We did oh, you're State right. On Wednesday, yeah. You're right. I remember now. Well, yeah. thanks for All hanging right. out with us, guys. We will see you on Friday. Or Friday. Bye, guys. <laughs> Just to